<laughs> Hello, good morning, welcome to Sewing Quarter. I'm here with my lovely fox friend this morning. We're just having a little snooze on our Saturday morning. I'm lovely to have your company here with us. If you're not sure who I am, I'm clearly a bit mad. My name's Amy Burrows and I'm here this morning joined with my lovely Budgie and Fox friends and also the lovely Joe Carter is here this morning as well for some toy making. So, togs and toys, we're doing clothes and some lovely little animals this morning. We've got the Budgies back. They flew out quite literally last time, really, really quickly. So we've managed to get them back in today. Um, nine o'clock, you're not going to want to miss that. We've got lots of, lots of stock and we've got some new colour options as well. So really excited to share those with you with Joe at nine. Actually, let's have a look at the menu of what's coming up today. We'll talk you through in order. So at eight o'clock, we've got some premier fabrics. We've got some brand new autumn woodland from Lewis and Irene. So we've had lots of requests for some autumnal fabrics and here they are. At nine o'clock, yay, the budgie buddies, the budgies are back. So we've got Bruce and um, who else have we got? I was going to say we've got Bruce and Barry. And there's a third one. Oh, Bertie, Bruce, Barry and Bertie. So we've got the budgies back. At 10 o'clock, we have got wardrobe essentials. So we're looking at some of your most pop, your most favourite uh, most, most favourite, that's not a phrase, Amy, your favourite pattern. So we've got some all different ones. We've got dresses and tops and skirts to show you. And at 11 o'clock, we've got the Tilda toy. So Joe's here to show us how to make the new Tilda fox. And we've also got some um, Tilda fabric from the Harvest collection. So I really do feel like we've, we're shifting into autumn now. We have got some lovely autumn fabrics this morning and with that harvest collection from Tilda as well. So we're really starting to think about, about log fires and leaves and nice crisp, nice crisp autumn mornings. So as well, we'd love to hear from you. So Saturday morning, let us know what you're up to. What are you making today? Maybe you've made the budgies before. Send us a picture if you have um, and we'd love to see them. So you can do that either via the website if you head to sewingquarter.com and you go to the live feed of today's show. That's it, you just click on that watch icon. And then if you just scroll down, I feel like that should have been me laying across the desk with our fox friend. Then you get to that message to the studio box, that bubble on the side there. Hello, Amy. So you can drop us a message that goes straight upstairs to our producer, Hannah, and then that will come down here into the studio as well. So if you've got any messages or questions for Joe, you can do that there. And then underneath that is also all of the products from today's show. So that acts like a live a shopping basket, if you like, of everything that we've got on the show. If you want to add things to your basket, you can do it there and check them out. What has he put? She put, I love budgies. Our producer Hannah has actually got a budgie and she's taken some pictures of her budgie with our budgies, so you'll see those. And yeah, as we go through today, new products will be added to that shopping list there. Now, you can also get in touch via email. So if you want to send us a picture of the budgies that you've made, I did have a little look on Facebook last night and I saw lots of you putting your pictures on there. But do send them in via email so we can show them on the show. Studio at sewingquarter.com. Let's get as many as we can of those budgies in and we'll, we'll create a budgie extravaganza. As I said, our producer Hannah has actually got a budgie and it's almost, these, the budgies look like they're having a gossip about the fox, don't they, over here? It's like a little, having a little huddle. Um, and Hannah's budgie is exactly like this little green one here. But these are on at nine with Joe, so we're going to be looking at how to make these. We've got all of our instructions in the kits. And you actually get enough fabric in the kit to make three budgies, so it's a really great one at nine o'clock. But in this hour, as I said, we're launching some premier fabrics, so some brand new ones this morning from Lewis and Irene. Should we go and have a look at those? Yes, let's go and have a look. So, now to start with, first of all, as I said, we have had a lot of requests for, um, for some more autumnal fabrics. So we've done some autumn bundles this morning. So combinations of solids and also linear texture fabrics that we've put together in those, those classic sort of colours that you associate with autumn. So I'm going to start with the... Um, let's have a look at the orange one to start with, because this is, this is, you know, this is just autumn. I was going to say on a plate, but on a table, it's just everything you would expect. Those colours that are really, really rich and vibrant and just, you know, that really do evoke sort of feelings of autumn. But you've got here lovely coppers and oranges. You've got two linear look fabrics, so you can see there on the top with the um, darker, really rich red there. And then you've got, it sort of reminds you of, of pumpkins and of Halloween as well. You've got a solid orange. You've got a darker uh, orange there as well, sort of more of a copper colour or an auburn actually. And then again, you've got another linear look fabric in a sort of a bronzy colour. And that's lovely because it's just catching the light there. You can see with that fabric, it's got a nice sheen to it. 
And then finally, you've got more of a more of a sort of golden yellow. But very, very rich colours, as I say, sort of those golden oranges and yellows. And it's definitely getting more autumnal outside now. I mean, you notice it in the we, we get up super early to be we have to be in the studio really early, obviously, before before we're here at eight o'clock. And so when you come in, and now I really notice it how dark it is outside when we get up. Whereas in the summer I was getting up and I was like, oh, maybe I'm meant to be up at this at this time, you know, four or five in the morning, because it's nice and light outside. But now it's not doesn't feel right. But this is the pumpkin pie bundle. So you've got those lovely golden yellows and oranges. We'll look through that in more detail in a bit, but just to show you the different ones we've got this morning. We've had a message from Linda. Morning, Linda. The budgies are super cute, aren't they? Really, really lovely. We're doing those at nine o'clock with Joe Carter. We've just managed to get them back in. So we've got all of our lovely little different budgies there and some new colourways as well. So stay watching. Now, we've also got, um, going again on that autumn theme, we've got a green bundle this morning. So this one here has got some um, softer yellows in it and some sort of golden colours again, but also some different greens. So we've got the uh, crosshatch uh, green there on a, on a forest green. That's a linear look fabric. Then you've got a brighter green there, so more of a lime green. Then this is more of a khaki green. And then you've got a linear texture fabric again, but in more of a yellow. These are already really quickly being put into baskets. We had a lot of people starting to want to look at autumnal fabrics. And another yellow there. And actually, if you, if, you, you know, if you do make a lot of quilt, this is the time of year where you really start to want to um, you know, make a quilt and snuggle up in a quilt and get nice and cosy. And it reminds me of you know, hot chocolate and watch a film and get all nice and snuggly. So yeah, if you do want those autumnal colours, there's the orange bundle there, the pumpkin pie. And then autumn leaves is the green one with your yellows as well there too. And in fact, they work really well together. I'll show you those as a, as a pair in a second. Now, we've also got a much richer bundle here, looking at some more sort of wine-like colours with burgundies and pink as well. So this one, and I'm being told that these budgies are going to be, they're going to appear at different places in the studio this morning. So if you're really on it and you're really, you're on the ball this morning, you might see them a bit like Where's Wally. You might see them spot up in different places as they fly across the studio. Our floor manager, Amy, is getting ready to, getting ready to move them all around. So looking at these um, pinks and burgundies, you've got another linear look fabric there on the top with that cross hatching detail again. Woodland berries. This is like a mulled wine sort of bundle here. Then you've got a very rich burgundy. Sort of a lovely burgundy colour there, like a Merlot. And then you've got a brown, a nice deep brown. Then you've got a crosshatch fabric, the linear look fabric on the um, on a cream. So just light, lightening things up a little bit if you wanted to go for those winter berries. And then you've got more of a pink or plummy colour there on the bottom. So three solids and two linear look fabrics in all of those bundles. You can just see those there as a family of five. Now, if I was going to mix any of these bundles together, really going, uh, going down that autumn path, we have all the leaves falling down. I do love when you sort of drive down roads and there's the, the leaves just everywhere and that when you crunch through them in your wellies, that is a nice feeling. That's one of the good things about autumn, despite the cold. But if I was going to pair those two together, the green and orange do work really beautifully together. If you just look here with those um, sort of golden colours. So the orange one is called pumpkin pie. But just looking how they work as a, as a whole collection together. Obviously, your green and red on the top as well, if you wanted to pair those as more of a Christmassy feel. But then as you look at these sort of greens and oranges, let me just move those to the side. These two colours work really beautifully together. So that lime green and the bright pumpkin orange. And actually, as we step down, so you've got those bright ones in each, the green and the orange. And then as you go down here, this is more of a, um, this is, uh, has a really autumnal feel with the, with the khaki and then the deeper sort of copper colours. That lovely auburn orange there, really. I love khaki. I wear a lot of that. I think it's a really lovely colour. I wear a lot of khaki. 
So just looking at these two bundles together and then again obviously you can mix and match these differently but with the, the linear look fabrics again if you're looking at those that golden sunshine yellow and then the, the copper orange. And then the bottom one there, you've got your yellows. This is just taking, you know, one, one at a time bit. There's nothing to stop you mixing and matching them differently to this as well. But then your, your brighter colours there with the two different yellows. So those are the two bundles. We've got the greens and we've got the oranges. And then we've got that woodland berry with the rich port and burgundy and wine-like colours in your pinks. Now... I did say we had some new fabrics to show you. We've just got a quick message in from Carol. Morning, Carol. Um, morning, only found your program a couple of weeks ago. Where have you been, Carol? Um, but loving the show. It's good. I'm glad you found us. Good stuff. Um, let, let me know if you're making anything this weekend or if you're, perhaps if you've bought anything and you've, you've managed to make it or if, you're, if you've got your eye on something, we'd love to know. So, we're nearly a year. Well, our year at our birthday will be in January. So, we've been here, well, how many months is that now? Eight months? That's flown by. Gone so, so quickly. I was laughing to myself the other day when Derek was on because when I actually came to meet the team here at Sewing Quarter before and I went in to meet them for my very first meeting, Derek was sort of sat on the panel. And now it's really strange that we're just here as, you know, just here together. It's lovely. So these gorgeous new fabrics from Lewis and Irene this morning. Oh, which one to start with? Oh, I don't know which one to go for. I'm going to go for this one. This is beautiful. So Lewis and Irene are a family-run company and they're based in the New Forest, so you can really see this in these fabrics with that influence, if you like, of all the, you know, the autumn trees and those, those little, little woodland animals you would find there. This is a gorgeous fabric. This is upside down. Let me turn it over. Oh, look at this. This is a lovely slate grey background and then it's really, the feature here is those pink, the um, oranges and reds there in the trees, those sort of speckles. And again, with one of, those one of those fabrics where you just spot different things. So you've got, you've got your foxes and your hedgehogs. Really lovely. So this is being sold by the half metre. The bluebell wood. This is in dusk and it does come in a couple of colourways. So you can buy this off the bolt. Five ninety-five per half metre. And how that works, if you are new, like Carol, to sewing quarter this morning, if you do buy fabric that's um, by the half metre off the bolt, so what we do is we, you know, obviously we have lots and lots of that fabric and you can buy as much or as little as you like in half metre increments. So if you wanted two and a half metres of fabric, that would be five units. If you wanted five metres of fabric, that would be 10 units. So you can just add as much or as little as you like. And if you are buying more than a metre and a half, we do recommend that you do that via the call centre rather than on the website. So if you give them a ring, the number on your screen is 0800 112 4433 is the easiest way to order bigger, um, bigger orders of those autumn fabrics. So this is the Dusk Autumn Bluebell. Really stunning. I love that one. Let's have a look at the next one. I know you're going to be impatient this morning wanting to see all of these. Oh, we've had a message from Sonia. She's loving the autumn colours. Morning, Sonia. I'm glad you are. I do, I do love these colours. Really lovely. Being a, I, I'd say my hair is auburn. Some, I, sometimes it looks ginger, sometimes it looks brown. It's just, it just changes, seems to change colour. It's just my natural colour. But I feel like it's an autumn sort of hair colour. It fits in with this theme this morning. So... This one here is that woodland fabric again, but on a lighter background. So it really does highlight those, the, the leaves sort of falling down there. So what's really lovely about that is that you've got this sort of twisting path coming through. So this one's called First Frost. Lots of lovely detail. And in fact, again, even as a Christmassy fabric, you know, if you took sections of this, it's a really beautiful one. VLLW56, 5.95 per half metre. Let's move that one. Then next up, we have got this fabric again, but I'm going to show you a different one to start with. I'm going to go for, oh, let's go hedgehogs. These are all premier fabrics this morning, so if you've just tuned in, good morning. I'm glad you've, uh, we're all, everyone's waking up now, getting ready to go for our weekends. 
So we've got the uh, the woodland one in another colorway, but I'm just going to show you this hedgehogs one to start with. So this is on a khaki green background. You've got those these hedgehogs are really happy. Some of them are just look. You can see them snuggling here. Really cute. Look at this one having a lovely little little time in the leaves. Really beautiful. I'm loving these rich colours this morning. Has a very different feel, doesn't it, autumn to spring? You know, looking at some of the more, um, you know, those really bright or pastel. The pastels are more sort of spring and then we went really bold for summer and bright with lots of bright yellows and, you know, reds and blues and... Now really sort of taking a turn more with the oranges and greens this morning. A good friend of mine actually has um, moved abroad for a while and she's living in Spain. And she was saying the one thing she really misses is the seasons. You don't get so much of a change. It's, it stays sunny for so long, which is what we all think we like. But she said she really misses that change in weather and, you know, and the change in clothes that comes with that. And... And, you know, like knit, all your knitwear and coats and scarves and hats and getting all nice and cosy. Now, our hedgehog one as well also comes on a dusky background. And again, mixing and matching these would work really beautifully too. All of those bright orange leaves. You've got your reds. You've got some corals as well. And then you've got these lovely sunshine yellows. See, some of the little hedgehogs, I don't know if you can look closely, some of them look quite um, shocked and some of them just are having a lovely little lay down. Like they're... So this is the hedgehog on warm grey and then it does come, you can just see there if I move it over in that green as well. So if you want to compare those or mix and match them. Those leaves just look like they're sort of blowing in the wind across the two, don't they? You can sort of... Actually, I've kind of pattern matched that. Not intentionally, but it's sort of... Just here, just here it works. Other than that, I didn't do quite such a good job. We've got a hedgehog disappearing there under the fabric. But, but the wind is moving in the right direction. The intention was there. So, premieres, we've also got two others. So let's just go, let's go for all oh, the woodland in another colourway. And this is, this one is on, I'll tell you what actually, the, it's funny, the, the change in background fabric here, so now looking more towards um, sort of a warm beige. With the others, the, um, the leaves, the autumn leaves felt like the accent, but here, I, my eye straight away goes to the fox. It really changes it, I think, just because of the change of the background fabric. But they just sort of ping out. You can see them there. They're peeping round. We've got a sneaky fox. But here we're going for more of a neutral colour background. But it's not a cold beige, it's still got a warm sort of golden tone to it, rather than just being a, a very white or cream. So this one is afternoon. So autumn in bluebell wood comes in three colours. This is producer Hannah's favourite. I love these paths just twisting through. And there is one more. Let's have a look at our final one this morning. Then that's all of our premier autumn fabrics for, the, for today. Oh, that's upside down. And finally, this one is much more playful. We've got lots of lovely acorns on here. Oh, there's a little mouse, a little dormouse. Oh, this is, this is really cute. So you can see the acorn detail, you can see the little, little mice and you've also got berries and leaves and things. Look at our little mice, they're lovely. You've got little conkers there as well, uh, half in, half out. <laughs> do children still play conkers? I remember going to do that, collecting conkers from, from the park with my dad. 
And then you have to soak them in vinegar, don't you, to make them like really hard so that they don't so that you can win at conkers. So this one is called Woodland Mouse on Cream. Oh, just taking this from that solids bundle. Oh, I'm already started the mixing and matching. I'm not meant to do that yet, but I just couldn't resist. I will do that in just a moment. So let's have a look at all of these if we can, if we can just sort of scan across all of those new fabrics this morning. So a beautiful collection from Lewis and Irene. Their family, their, the motto of the company is threaded with love and you just get that feel, don't you, I think, with this fabric. Just, it's got a really lovely, lovely autumnal feel there. But the three woodlands in three different colourways, you've got the hedgehogs in two colourways and then you've got that mouse fabric as well. Actually, do you know what? I think this is my favourite in this, in this golden colour background as well. That's my favourite one there, afternoon. It's not afternoon, it's morning. Yes, I've got permission to start mixing and matching. This is what I wanted to do this morning. So we can start looking at these fabrics with the solids. This is when you really start to, for me, this is when the ideas start to come. So you can start to really think about whether it's, whether it's quilting or whether you want to make a really lovely autumnal bag or a, a little gift for someone, a makeup or toiletry bag. Or even if you wanted to do toys, you know, you can make a lovely little mouse toy perhaps or um, out of the mouse fabric or with the hedgehogs. Oh, oh my goodness, we should do a hedgehog cho a toy for autumn. Mm. I've got Joe Carter in today, I have to mention this. She's not busy, she's not got lots of other toys to do. It's not like she's already got a million other things going on. So, the most popular bundle at the moment is the yellow bundle. So let's mix and match, have a look at that one. So, I would mix and match the yellow one here with this. So this is the mouse fabric. And then if we start looking at the autumn leaves bundle here, just picking out these colours, if we look, if you look sort of at these, the acorn, de acorn detail, I don't know how closely you can see here, but you, just picking out the, um, the leaves. This is the ochre solid. And again, with that sunshine crosshatch detail fabric there, again, just picking out details, you know, really well colour matched with those leaves. Then you've also got a brighter green. This is your citrus green. Again, with some more of these other leaves. And then that darker forest green as well there. That matches, matching with your conkers. Let's just see that there. For me, it's this one that's a really lovely match. But also, if we look at this with the, um, the woodland fabric, and in fact, I would probably put it with maybe the cream, actually. Just picking out these yellows here. If you just look at that, picking out with the trees, and again here with this tree, if we can, if I move that up. And it's funny when you mix and match the solids and linear look fabrics with these, it, it, it highlights different icons or different motifs within the fabric. So if you, I think if you start to pair these with yellows, it really, it really picks out the detail on the trees. Now if we went for the green, if we introduced a green here, This is the, um, this is ochre, isn't it, this fabric? 
this uh, this colour is just goes with all of these fabrics. It picks out different tones within all of these. And then also looking again at this, um, the solids bundle with the hedgehogs. Well, actually, even if you mix and match that with the darker woodland, again, the ochre, but the greens work really well here. But the yellow is really picking out the detail in the leaves. So this fabric here is the um, Autumn in Bluebell Wood on Dusk, so it comes in three different colourways. And then the Autumn Leaves Bundle is this solid bundle here with your yellows and your greens. So it's two and a half metres of fabric, you get five half metre cuts. You get the crosshatch um, yellow, you get the golden yellow, then you get the crosshatch on green, you get the bright green, and then you get the, uh, you get the ochre as well there. So that's the citrus green and then the ochre. Now let's just have a look at this pumpkin bundle, which is so rich. This is, it makes me, it's like pumpkin pie sort of time. This is what, this is. Let's look at the colours first of all. Oh, they've just, they just work. So here we've got really orange and coppers here and, and these lovely auburn colours. So this one here is called, what's the first, this is called pumpkin. So this is like the inside of the flesh of the pumpkin. Then this is pumpkin linear. So you've got that, you can see there with the, uh, the sort of texture going through that. Just gives it a bit more depth. Then you've got the darker orange there. I think this is Vienna orange. Then you've got pumpkin orange, which is the really bold one. We've had a mix and match with colors there. That's definitely, that can't be called true red. This one must be called pumpkin because it's really bright orange. This one might be, and then you've got the red one here, which is post box. This is like a post box red, but again with that linear look. So this one is true red. There we go, we got there in the end. But look at these with this fabric. Imagine if you've got, you know, um, if you do some, if you if you've got the choice to make some maybe cushions or something where you could mix and match your um, home furnishings. If you wanted to add some nice cushions to a conservatory or to the lounge or something like that, you can make some gorgeous mixing and matching these. Look at these with this. Just picking out. Again, you've got that really lovely colour match here. Let's just look as well, if you look at this, picking out the colour of the fox. Can we look a little bit more closely at that? I don't know if we can just see as well with the golden yellow. And you don't have to use all of these fabrics. You know, you could mix and match some of these, pop some in your stash. But these, the yellows and oranges there just working really well, complementing each other. And actually, even this copper colour, we can't, don't want to completely cover the fox. And then if I take those out and we leave that there with our fox a second, I was just going to change it in for the red. Which, which then picks out the red detail. So all of these are in the pumpkin bundle. 
apart from obviously the pattern fabric, this is the Lewis and Irene one. But the, the pumpkin bundle as well would work really well with any of these woodland fabrics. So if you look at it with the, um, the slightly different, that was dusk, the darker one. Then you've got a lighter colourway here. Let's fold it this way. This one's called Afternoon. Producer Hannah saying it reminds her of sort of afternoon walks when it starts to get a little bit darker. But if you, again, these oranges work. It, it, the, the trees, the colours are the same, so you can just pick these out. Let's turn that over. Look at that. That's quite nice with just the solids, actually. But you could do some lovely quilting with these fabrics, you know, using mixing and matching these solids perhaps for sashing or for binding. That needs to go square. I don't like that on an angle. It makes it look... <laughs> That was ruining, ruining my little display. But we're missing some of those little animals. Look, there they are. That's better. This one here is uh, <laughs> just peeping through. So these colours around the border here are your pumpkin pie bundle. And then the bottom one is the afternoon fabric. So the bluebell wood comes in three colourways and this is the afternoon version of that. Oh, that's a really good idea. Producer Hannah saying these fabrics would work really well for quilt as you go because obviously something like the sophisticated strips where you really get to feature the, you know, the big panels of fabric, you could start to use these and incorporate them for the different, the different sections and because it comes together quite quickly, you could have an autumnal quilt by next week. You could make that really, really quite quickly. And autumn does seem to be just coming now. It's right here. It's ready to go. Look at this detail as well. This is the sort of thing I love. On the selvage of the um, Lewis and Irene fabrics, they've done little leaves that show you all the different colours in there. So you can mix and match these with, your, with the solids. Lucy Brennan keeps all her selvages. She said that they do, she's going to do a, I think it's a quilt she was going to do making a quilt out of all the selvage edges and the different ones and we had some Christmassy ones that had snowmen on and Father Christmases and she's like keep that keep that and we just put them in the trolley for Lucy and looking at that as well with the hedgehogs we've not really looked at these two let's look at this with the pumpkin bundle again so this is the darker hedgehogs I think this is on dusk is this one called oh it's called warm grey This is making me feel more at peace with the fact that summer's leaving and that we are going for more, more an autumnal feel. But the solids, I have to say, I really do like, usually sometimes the solids might look a little bit plain, but because the fabric's got so much to offer and there's so much going on there in that fabric, the solids just frame it really well. And alternatively, if we take the solids out and we swap them in for the, uh, the linear look fabrics, again, you get a different feel. So you've got the red, the true red, and the pumpkin orange linear look fabrics in that bundle as well. But just picking out slightly different features and slightly different leaves. I want to be that hedgehog this morning. Look how happy that hedgehog is. He's just having the time of his life. And then there's that little one there who's like a little worried hedgehog. This one here who's just taking a slow, slow meander through the woods. <laughs> so the hedgehog fabric also comes on a green as well. So I'll just change that in. Which fabric's most popular at the moment? The bundles are really, really popular this morning. Oh. 
producer Hannah's looking at the baskets. You can see that those solid bundles this morning are really, really popular. How about the Lewis and Irene? Which ones? The dusk autumn wood. So this darker one. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. Just looking at the hedgehogs on the green background as well. Just mixing these. These bundles work with all of them. This is the thing. They've all got leaves of those similar, those similar hues. Just picking those out there. Oh, we've had a question in. Who was that from? The, the blue bellwood, yes. This one. Ah, oh, okay, so we've had a request to see this with the berry bundle. We'll do that in just a second. So let's move these to the side. Du, 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 du. What's an autumn-specific project? I'm trying to think of something that you would make specifically for autumn. Because, yeah, a quilt next to a log burner, something like that, into, or, or lovely cushions to sit, you know, to pop on the sofa or perhaps in a, in a or nice wicker furniture in a conservatory or... Or even a little quilt to take in the garden. Because you know sometimes you get those crisp evenings where you could still sit outside. So let's have a look at the woodland berry bundle. I've not spent much time on that one, actually. So this one here is more, um, it's, got, it's got more sort of port and wine-like colours, some nice rich burgundies and also a brown. So you've got um, chocolate, vanilla, port, claret, and what was the last one? Berry as well. In that colourway. So this one isn't just a plain solid. This has got the linear look and the cross-hatching detail on it there, so you can just see. And also that one on the top has got the cross-hatch detail too. This is the winter berry. And then you've got those solids in your chocolate, your port and your claret as well there. So those sort of plum-like colours. We had a request to look at this with the um, woodland fabric. So if I pair this with this. Oh, yes, look at this. That's lovely. The really deep red there. Thanks, Tina. Great idea. Loving your suggestion. We'll lay those out so you can see them all. You've got the cream there as well. Which actually highlights the tiny little sort of the feature there on the tail, on the fox's face. I love this colour here with it. This one. And you've also got more of those berry colours coming through here in that. Let's pop that one there. Just so you can see all of those together. So those are your colour options in that bundle, and that's how they would work with that fabric if you did want to see that as a, as a pairing. Let's have a look at that with the, white, uh, with the whiter background woodland fabric. First frost. I do dread that, though, when you have to scrape the car in the morning and add an extra five minutes. I want to stay in bed for an extra five minutes. Please don't make me scrape a windscreen. And as well, does anyone else have that debate with themselves? Of, or maybe I'll just sit in the car and have the heater on for five minutes rather than actually getting out and doing the scraping. I think maybe I'll do that instead. And then after a few minutes, I think, no, I'm going to have to get out and just give it a good scrape. It's not going to do it itself. Oh, actually, no, I like it with this. This is this colour for me. Is this the, um, is this burgundy or port? Which is this one called, Hannah? Claret. I think that one, for me, is the standout colour that really works. But this is now looking at it with first frost. I'm going to just move these down so you can see a little bit more. Now we've got the most limited stock on this bundle and lots of you with it in your basket. So if you do like this one, please do check it out. Just we don't want people to miss out this morning. 
Oh, there's less than 10 of those in stock if everyone checks out their baskets. So if you do like Woodland Berry, which is the one here with your chocolate and with your port and claret colours, 1945. Now, also just a note on these um, solids bundles, well, the solids and linear look fabric bundles this morning. If you multi buy those, these are already pre cut into half metre um, cuts of fabric. So if you bought two of those bundles, you wouldn't get a metre, say, of the chocolate or a metre of the port. You'd get two half metre cuts because they're already, they're already ready to go to you as a pre cut bundle. Oh, as well, so for the next hour, Joe's back in and we've got the budgies back in. So if you missed them last time or if you didn't manage to get one last time they were on the show because they flew out, um, please do get your pictures in this morning. We've already had loads of pictures, but we want, to see, we want to see all your photos of your budgies. Let's have a look at those. You can email them in, studio at sewingquarter.com. Or even if you own a budgie, producer Hannah does own a budgie. She's taken a picture of hers with the budgie, but she can't be the only person out there with a budgie. Send us a photo this morning, studio at sewingquarter.com. And Joey's here to make a little, a little gang of budgies. What do you call a group of budgies? I want, what's the, it's not a gaggle, is it? That's geese. I'm not sure about that. So should we go through these Lewis and Irene fabrics in terms of popularity now? So which is the most popular at the moment? Bluebell wood at dusk. And is this really far out in the lead? Ah, all of the bluebell woods are very popular. This is the most popular. So this is the darker, the darkest background option for this. There's about, just so there's about 20 people with this in their baskets at the moment. And, and so if you were only buying half a metre, um, we'd have enough stock. But if you're buying more than that, then we start to become limited. So please do check out your baskets. This is the one you like. This is the most popular one this morning. WHLW60. Just all these lovely little flecks of colour. The nice thing about that is it really does give you lots of options, as we've seen actually looking at those different solids, of what to match these with. 5.95 per half metre. This is 100% cotton. This is the dusk option. And those lovely trees as well there, which is with the winding paths. Who's spotting our budgies flying around this morning and moving? They have jumped, they've moved. Who spotted it? <laughs> so we've got the, um, the bluebell wood in dusk. Then we've also got it in the, which is the next most popular? Afternoon. Afternoon. This is my favourite one of all six fabrics in this new collection this morning. If you've just tuned in, good morning. I hope you're, wake, you're waking up and having a nice cup of tea. And this is a brand new collection from Lewis and Irene this morning. It's the first time we've had them on the show. So these are a premiere. And we're looking at these six different fabrics with a really lovely autumnal feel. Lots of leaves and acorns and hedgehogs. So this is the second most popular one this morning. That lovely windy path there. And actually, you can do. You are, there are some of these motifs that cross the, go over the two, so you can notice these hedgehogs here. And I'll just show you these side by side if you do want to mix and match them, or perhaps to do reversible cushions or something like that. Oh, Jean's message in, she loves the new fabric. And what does she say, a group of budgies? How about a tweet of budgies? I like that. We have to put that on Twitter. <laughs> A tweet of budgies, that's good. So we've got these two fabrics here as well if you wanted to mix and match those. So afternoon is this more golden one. And then dusk is on the bottom of your screens there in the darker colourway. Please be aware of your baskets on both of those ones. You do need to check them out. Or give the call centre a ring, 0800 112 4433. Loads of you with these in your baskets this morning, and I'm not surprised. They're really lovely, gorgeous fabrics. And the first time we've had these more sort of autumnal ones on from Lewis and Irene this morning. So the next most popular, wow, all of the Bluebell Woods are really popular this morning. There's one other one in this range. Let's open this right out. Actually, let's hold this up. 
So this would be a metre of fabric. So this is two units. I'm going to disappear and let you have a look. <laughs> most people are actually buying a metre this morning. That's the most popular increment. So people may be looking to do a slightly a bigger project with that or to incorporate it into other things. And now I can't see what you're looking at. What are you looking at? I can put it down. I can peek back round. But again, if you mix and match this, Now, I would probably put this with, let's have a look at it with the golden one. Yes, I'll go for the afternoon one with this. There we go. Again, it's the same motifs across those two woodland fabrics. So afternoon is the golden one, which is across the bottom of your screens. And then this one here is your first frost. Almost like the different stages of autumn, those different steps. One sort of, this is maybe your September, and then this is more going into, almost more Christmassy actually. With you, It looks winter, very wintry and sort of snow-like. And then this one here is your, maybe your dark November or... <laughs> I just made that sound very sort of, very different, sort of, oh, dark, horrible times, very in the scary, scary wood. So no, that's your darkest one this morning. In the deep, dark wood. What's that poem in the... There's a... Dip, I forgot what it is. There's something about going into the deep, dark wood. That's this one here. In a dark, dark wood, in a dark, dark house, or something like that. I'm not just making it up, I promise. And then this first frost here is your lighter one, and the afternoon is the golden one here. So those are the most popular ones this morning all of our Bluebell Wood collection from Lewis and Irene. But we have also got three other options. Which is the next most popular? Is it hedgehogs or is it our acorns? And it's the mouse, which is producer Hannah's favourite. So let's have a look at that. Producer Hannah's not dealing with mice. She had a wasp's nest in her house that she had to deal with yesterday. Right by her bedroom window. That's not really ideal, is it? She said she woke up and she could just hear this buzzing like she was in a horror film. That's not, not fun. So this one here is our mouse fabric. So we've got a really lovely, again, you've got, you've got acorns and conkers in this one here. And again, those autumn leaves. I feel like this has a more, a sort of a lighter, more playful feel to it. I think this would also be lovely for maybe children's projects. Perhaps a little autumn bag for school or for um, a book bag or something like that. Just looking at that from slightly further afar as well, you can see they, these are much smaller motifs. What does that look like with with this. All of these fabrics do just mix and match if you wanted to sort of to play around with these. Or what does it look like with the dark, in the dark, dark wood? What does it look like with that one? <laughs> So that's our mouse, GBLW28. And if we look at that quickly with the autumn leaves bundle, the ochre, the, the ochre colour in this autumn leaves bundle just works with all of these, but particularly this one because it's picking out the acorns and the conkers. This is the one I meant. So this is your autumn leaves bundle here with your ochre, your bright green, your forest green with that cross hatching detail, your yellow and your golden sunshine yellow again with that linear look. And your mouse fabric there.
Oh, we've had another message from Victoria. Morning, Victoria. What's this one? This is about budgies. It's on the iPad. Let's have a look. A group of budgies is a chatter, a chattering or a flock. See, we're, I, we're, we're all learning this morning. That's, thank you very much. I didn't know what it was. I, I wasn't sure if it was a... I knew it wasn't a gaggle because that was geese, but a ch I like a chatter. That sounds like they're all having a little... Like when they're, well, they're arranged here, aren't they? Having a little gossip, like a chatter, chatter, chatter. Um, can you hold the woodland mouse up? Of course I can. <laughs> Not the actual woodland mouse. I can hold the fabric up. Imagine if I just pulled one up from behind the desk. I'd be running if I was putting a little mouse up, but here it is. We've also had a question about when the budgies are coming up. They are here in the next hour, so in just 10 minutes with um, Joe Carter, we've got the budgies back in stock and we've got some new colourways as well. So really excited to look at those. Oh, now we've also had an email from, who was that one from? From Therese, morning Therese, saying that a group of budgies is called a, an exhibition, did you say? A show or an exhibition? Maybe there were just lots of words to describe groups of budgies, but we've got a chatter, a chattering, a flock, a tweet, I like that one. And then we also had, and um, now we've got an exhibition and a show. A chatter, I like a chatter. Then we also had our hedgehog fabrics too which were new this morning. Which is most popular, the green or the darker one? With hedgehogs. We'll just check. The darker one. Let's hold this one out. It's, I feel like I should do a, like a the, that, that was a wind sound effect in case you weren't sure what the whistling noise was. You can see that they're going through. And actually, the background colour of that with this really lovely. Oh, imagine an, an autumnal shirt or some little children's clothes as well you could make out of these. You could make a lovely little little dress or something. But I was going to mix and match those if I just pull that over. So you've got the blowing leaves here, which is your hedgehogs on grey, on a warm grey. And then this is the dusk. I almost feel like these are the leaves, these are sort of the, the zoomed in version of these leaves. All of those colours are sort of picked across the two. And our final hedgehog's fabric is on a green. Here it is. It's quite a, it's a, it's quite a soft green, actually, sort of a, gold, a goldeny, khaki colour, rather than being a punchy sort of lime green or anything like that. All of these fabrics this morning, 100% cotton. They're all 5.95 per half metre. As I said earlier, most people are buying a metre of these fabrics today. But picking out all those iconic motifs that you associate with autumn. So your leaves, your acorns, your hedgehogs, your woodland animals. JTLW65 is the green option here. So, those are your different options from Lewis and I. I mean, there are six different fabrics in total. And we're going to look at that berry bundle once more. Less than five of these, oh, there are four of these left in stock, so if you're speedy, you might get one. I'll quickly show you through the colours. Oh, there's one. That's how quickly it changes. So we've got um, one solid. I'll really quickly whiz through these. You've got your deep burgundy, your berry, your port, your ivory, and your chocolate brown. So that's that bundle. I will take that one off the table as there's only one left. If you're super quick, you might be the, you might be the one to get that. Then you've got the pumpkin bundle. 
How much stuck have we got on this one? Okay, less than 20 of this one. So let's look at these colours. So you've got the um, you've got the red to start with, with that linear look. If everyone checks out their baskets, there are less than 10 of this. So KEGC33, just your different colours there for pumpkin pie. And we had one other solids bundle. The pumpkin one, do we want to see again? The greens. Let's just lay this out as a whole. You've got your greens there with some yellows. Two and a half metres of fabric, so you get half a metre of all of these greens and these golden yellows too. Only 12 of that one left in stock, autumn leaves, DOGC 66, 1945. So any of the Bluebell wood fabrics, please, we would suggest that you check out your baskets on those this morning. We, everyone putting those in really quickly, so you do need to check out your baskets if you do want that one this morning. And the budgies are coming next, the chatter, the tweet, the flock, whatever we call them. Here they are, we've got a whole group of budgies and some new colourways this morning as well. So I'm joined by Joe Carter, we've got those bundles for the budgies. Don't go anywhere, fly back in in three, we'll see you shortly. <laughs> Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. So I'm going to be showing you how to do a hem stitch. Now a hem stitch is just a row of small slanting stitches that are used to secure your hem. So in this case I'm pretending that this is going to be the bottom of a trouser leg. I'm first going to take my needle through the single hem. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail before I place that back down. So then I'm going to do a double stitch. Now this is just where you sew over the same area twice, so you're creating a, a knot. So that's one, two. So that's securing my thread now. And now we can begin doing our hem stitch. So you're going to need to bring your needle in at a diagonal. So you want to pick up a few stitches from what would be the trouser leg before then going into your hem so you can make this stitch a little bit bigger and then repeating that process again at a diagonal you're going to be picking up a few stitches of the trouser leg and then we can pick up more of the single hem so I'm making these stitches super big so you can see what I'm doing but when you do this at home, you'd want to make these a little bit closer together. Okay, so there's my row of hem stitching. And if I just turn this over, you can see they're very small stitches on the other side. So if you're doing this in a normal thread and not a thick thread, you won't be able to see those at all. This Monday, Jane Alcock joins us for two shows aimed at helping us improve our quilting technique. Jane will launch this quilting quest by bringing the seaside to the studio. Using some gorgeous fabrics in a marine colour palette, she'll create an origami boat quilt block. She'll go on to make a striking rainbow pyramid quilt as featured in Emma Jean Janssen's Buy the Bundle book. These stunning blocks with their bold colours and clean lines incorporate contemporary designs with traditional techniques. And with Jane's expert guidance, making them at home will be easier than you think. So tune in on Monday the 11th of September at 8am and 10am and quilt along with Jane. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Good morning, welcome back to Sewing Quarter this morning. If you've just joined us, the budgies are back. We've got them back in stock, so they flew out last time, and we've got them here today in some new colourways. Here's our little budgie friend. This is our new one today in the blue. Now these are going to, well, they always, they've been on once and they flew out so, so quickly. This is Barry the budgie, 
And we've got three options this morning, three brand new colorways for this. And Joe Carter is going to show us how to make our lovely little budgie friend. And all of these bundles, you get enough fabric to make three of these. And you'll probably still have a little bit left over. So if you do like these, if you missed out last time, please do check out your baskets quickly once I start showing you these. I don't want anybody to miss out. And also send in your pictures. We've got some on Facebook, but send them in as well via email, studio at sewingquarter.com. You can attach a picture and let us see those this morning. We can show them on the show. Victoria's taught me it's a chatter of budgies. So we're going to start with Barry. Now, with all of these, you get your instructions. So these are from Jo. This, this is a toy that she's designed. Um, and you get everything in here you, you need to talk you through the process to make the budgie. So you've got your step-by-step -step instructions. Oh, that's a bit bright, isn't it? There we go. All of the step-by-step -step photography. Particularly important with helping you with finishing it off and making sure you get that character in the face. And then you've also got your templates here for cutting out. There they are, our budgies. So you get your instructions. And then in the Barry bundle, this is this, is this colourway you can see here. So you've got a metre and a half of fabric, three half metre cuts in these three different colourways. You've got the cornflower blue. You've got the um, slate grey crosshatch detail with that texture there. And then you've got a lighter, softer grey that we've used for the face. For Barry. And that's enough fabric to make three budgies. Now you also get the felt, which you can use for our little lovely little nose there. You get a skein of thread for the face. You also get some normal regular thread for assembling the actual bird. You get a big bag of wadding. I'll quickly show you these so I won't show them every time. But just so you can see how much you get. All of this as well. So you've got wadding for the wings and you've also got um, filling as well. So all of this comes in that. So for £22.95, you've got um, all of that to make three budgets. So next one, should we go green and yellow? Let's, I'll just leave that there. So this one here is our bright, a little bit like this one on the front. This one is Bruce. So say hello to Bruce. And here is your same, this, the colourways here, you've got a green, a yellow, and then you've got a lovely black and white fabric, which I'll show you. Bruce is the most limited stock this morning. Very limited stock on this one. So check out your baskets, UNGC99. This has got sewing detail and words written on this. So haberdashery, ribbon, quilting, linen, all different things written through the fabric. And then your greens and yellows. Already 10 people with that in their baskets in approximately 30 seconds. So please, we cannot guarantee those orders. Check out your baskets if that is the one you want. One final budgie option. This one here, we've got a really bright turquoise. You've got a white. I think this is the one. Yes, Joe's got one of these made up. And we've got a spot on grey here as well. This is Bertie the budgie. And again, you get your thread. See that one there? You get your felt. You get all of your instructions. AMGC 22, your wadding and your stuffing, enough to make three budgies there. These went so, so quickly last time, so it's the first time we've been able to bring them back. We've only just managed to get all of the stock back in to put together these bundles for you this morning. And we can already see these being really quickly checked out on both the website and through the call centre. So not to add any undue pressure, but if you do want a budgie this morning and you don't want to miss out, if you want a Bertie or a Bruce, then please do check them out on the website or give the call centre a ring. 0800 112 4433. So should we get cracking and see how we actually make our little bird this morning? Jo, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? I'm good. Last time you were, in, you were making, well, you were going to a wedding with your bears yeah. in a bag. I was, yes. Did they go down well? They did, they did. The flower girls really liked them. So oh, That was good. That was good. That's good. And we've got the budgies back in. We have. Which you designed. Tell me a bit about this one. So you did this one for Simply Sewing. Yes. It was a few months ago in Simply Sewing magazine. Um, yes, they asked me for a budgie. I, I really enjoyed designing this one. Did you? Yeah. This what do you like? This is Barry the budgie. What do you like about the budgie? What did, did you just, just a nice playful one? Yeah, it's unusual. Um, I make a lot of bears and things like that. Um, but yes, I, I don't think, I, I think this is my first ever, my only budgie pattern. Your only, your only budgie. <laughs> Are you running out of animals yet, Jo? Um, probably. For, for, to, do, to make something for the first time. <laughs> I, I don't 
no, well. No, no, there are lots, there are lots of animals, aren't there? <laughs> and we can, then we can go into mystical creatures like the unicorn. Yeah. So um, this is Barry the budgie. And oh, we've already got lots of pictures being sent in. I can see our producer, Hannah. This is her <laughs> actual budgie and a picture of the budgie as well that she took home. And the colour, look, spot on colour match and everything. <laughs> What's your budgie called, Hannah? Barry. Oh, Bowie, like David Bowie. Bowie the budgie. <laughs> we will look at some other people's makes in just a second. We've got lots of budgie pictures this morning. So how simple was this to do? It's quite, it, I would say, sort of in, intermediate maybe, but a confident beginner could tackle it. There's, there's okay. not too much. Because the main body doesn't look it. too tricky. It's not. It looks I think, like it's a fairly sort of simple shape. It's the detail, isn't it? And, the, and the, usually the face and the head. I think the fiddliest bit probably is fitting the beak in. Okay, should we have a look at this then, how we get started? Okay. Let's pop that one there. We'll add him to our chatter. Victoria messaged in to tell me it's a chatter. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> we had a tweet. Someone said we should call it a tweet. A, a tweet of I like that. That's cute, <laughs> isn't it? So what's the first step with this then? How, where would you begin? When I make something like this, I it? start <laughs> with um, all the bits that are added into seams. So I'll make the beak, the wings and the feet and the tail. Yes, so all of that, get everything with. ready to go. And then once I've got all those, I can just sew the whole thing together. So, turn him I, can, I can hold on to him, it's all right. <laughs> we need a cage, like a little cage in the studio this morning. <laughs> right, so the beak is these two, well, it's one piece cut twice. I'm just sew around the sides, pausing at the end with the needle down to pivot and then back up that end, leaving the top open. And this is with a felt. This is with the felt, yes. Just to give a slightly different feel and, and the texture to that as Bits well. Bits of extra texture. It doesn't, with the felt, it doesn't need too much stuffing in either, which makes it that bit Because it's a bit easier. thicker, isn't it? So it's it is. It, and then you have the seam allowance inside as well. So you, you only need a tiny bit of filling. But it's great to sew with felt. It, it does what it's told, really. It stays <laughs> it together, behaves. doesn't it? It does. So you're making, this is the Bertie, um, the, the bundle that you can see here that's made up. This one here that I've got in my hand is Barry, but the one that Joey's making is Bertie. So it does get a bit confusing. If you want to check any of those fabrics, you can look on the website. Let's pop in there. There we go. With your toys, do you always follow the same seam allowance? I do. It's a quarter yeah. of an inch um, or six millimetres. And... With making toys, you don't want too much of a seam allowance because you don't want that bulk. Because often they're quite small. Yeah. You don't want that bulk you inside. It. You do. So yeah. the beak. Okay. And then it's quite small, needs a bit of clipping. So clip away the tip, avoiding the stitches. And sometimes I'll take a little bit out here, but it, it's fine. You don't need to put V-shaped notches in, but you can if you want. But I'll show it without. You do notice the difference, actually, with that thickness of the felt, don't you? It gives it a little bit more sort of body. It does, and when it's more resilient as well, when you're pushing the end of the beak out and things. Have it... you ever made a whole toy in felt? Yes, I must have made... I, I, t I usually mix fabrics, but... Yes, I've certainly made Christmas tree decorations, little yeah. animals out <laughs> That's of That's the go-to thing, thing, isn't it? Christmas is just felt. We've got felt written all over it. So making the little beak there. Also as well, just these budgies you can see on the table. These are in all different colourways. So these are some of the ones we've had on the show um, last time they were on. But the one there with the grey wings and the blue body, that's Barry. That's the one on your screens at the moment. Already 30 Barrys have been checked out this morning. And 20 other people with Barry in the basket, which sounds a bit strange, but um, so please do check out QJGC11. Okay, I'm just popping a little bit of filling into the beak, push it down. It doesn't need to go all the way to the top because this end bit fits into the seam allowance and you don't want filling all the way up to the top because then it makes sewing it in that bit trickier. But the felt holds its shape really nicely, so you don't have to jam. Just a bit, tiny little bit. Just really. a tiny bit, just to give it that shape at the bottom of the beak. And then I'm just going to, within the seam allowance, so the stitches don't have to come out, I'm just going to base that end closed. Okay. You sort of follow a, a fairly, once you've made toys as well, you always seem to follow that routine of making all the little, the little bits and pieces, the bits you're going to add on, whether it's limbs or, you know, um, the tail or different 
you know, the antlers that we did on the um, giraffe, all those little bits and pieces, you make them all, have them ready to go, and then yes. assemble them, really. Often, if I was making... In fact, I made two budgies at the same time, and I would do two beaks for oh, wings. Okay. I would get all those bits ready. I do all the little bits. I regularly have limbs <laughs> just ready to go. Stocks of limbs. You get enough in these bundles to make three budgies, so there's plenty in there, and you probably still have a little bit left over, wouldn't you? You would. Um, and also, just really quickly, sorry to interrupt, Joe. we have just got a stock warning. Which one is that on? Bruce. We're just going to show so you can see the colourway for Bruce. How many have we very limited on stock on that one now? Less than five left of Bruce. So your instructions, all of your, all of your fabric. This is the last time we'll show this bundle. The filling, the wadding, the felt, the thread. If you do want the yellow and green, UNGC99. Less than five in stock for that one. Sorry, Jay, to interrupt you there. No problem. So do a, whilst we're doing the felt, I'll, move, I'll do a foot. Stay on the felt part. So these, this is one foot already done. And this is the piece, and it just folds over. And I'm going to sew along the side, needle down to pivot, and just sew the end closed as well. Okay. I'm intrigued, Joe. When you get given an animal to do, say like a budgie, do you look at real life budgies or do you look at other budgie toys? Or what do you, where do you, how, how do you decide, oh, this is going to be the shape of what I think the foot would be? Or the always beak, or... the first look, and I'll print out a couple of pictures, is always the an actual animal. The real version. So, yes. My search history on my computer will just be full of animals. <laughs> Folders of animals. But yes, I'll print out a couple of pictures. And that helps me choosing colours and prints as well for the fabric. Or... Yes, I, I like to... If I can retain something of the, the original of the real animal. animal. Yeah. That's how they look quite so realistic as well, isn't it? You know, if you take something that is a bit more real rather than sort of a cartoon version of it. Also, the instructions only come as part of that bundle. We're not offering them um, on their own this morning. They only come as part of that set with the fabric and the thread and everything else. Okay, so here's the, the folded side. And I'm going to clip the tip there just to remove some of the bulk, avoiding the stitching. And then clip into the internal corner and clip away the excess there. Do you find yourself putting into search engines like budgie foot and then you're trying to look at what that looks like? Well, yes, cause, because sometimes, especially with birds, it's how many, it's not toes, but... Is it talon? Bit, I don't know what they call, I don't know what they call the bird. But often, can I get away with just doing two? Yeah, does it how, many, three? how many does it need? So, yes. Although, I will take, if it's, if it's something small... I will try and get away with two. <laughs> Just a possible. few less. <laughs> We've got a picture being sent in from Claire of a budgie. Let's have a look at which one. Which one was this? Oh, these are from the last show. They're lovely. Billy and Joey, these budgies are called. They're fab. She made really Billy. Nice he looked lonely, so then she added Joey to the collection. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> See, and you've got enough there to make three, so you can make a little family of budgies. Lovely little presents as well, aren't they? They are. So Barry, also, the, the bundle for Barry, what's the stock warning on that? Over half the stock of that one's gone. So this is the blue one you can see here, and the, the graphic just coming up on your screens. The blue and grey. All of those are 22 95 If people can't decide between the blues... Should I? It's not quite finished. This is yes, my... we haven't seen that one made up, have we? This one's a This is Bertie. Mate. So he hasn't got any eyes at the moment. I'll put those <laughs> on. <laughs> but that does sort of prove but as well it... the difference once you add the eyes. It becomes a real thing, doesn't it? You know, this one's got to go for a little. Whereas this one, <laughs> this is Bertie in that darker turquoise there with the spot on grey. And Bruce has sold out. AMGC22 for Bertie. Thanks, Joe back on the trolley and when pushing the foot out it's quite felt is quite forgiving and because you've got that chunky seam allowance you can give it quite a firm sort of push out to get the shape of the toes they're not toes are they but someone will tell us what they called we don't know but someone will know Cl i mean claw no claws, i don't know ta talons claws but your talons i don't know Oh, 
There we go. And then a little bit of filling in, not right up to the top because it's easier to... You want some in because there's a toe stitching at the end just to give it a bit of definition and shape. So you want filling in the end, but you can leave this top bit empty. And in this bundle, we've got stuffing and wadding. Yes. So what, what's, the, what's the difference? What are we using those for, the different elements? The, I'll come on to the wadding in a minute with the wings, but it, it gives the wings some sort of thickness and some softness, but at the same time, they, they, they still stay flat and close to the body. So they lay it's, nice and flat down. It's not a, a chunky wing, it doesn't go... Whereas the stuffing is obviously for the main body of the, of yes. the bird. There we go, I've just basted that foot closed, and I'll do the other one. Yes, yeah, something like a wing. You want it to have a bit of thickness, but at the same time still be flat, if that makes sense. Yeah, because you still want it to hang sort of down, don't you? You don't want them yes. to stand too far away from the body. Over 80 budgies have found homes this morning, I'm being told. So if you did manage to get a budgie, well done you. We've still got some in stock of our Barry and Bertie. So Bertie is the turquoise one. Barry is the cornflower blue one you can see just here. OK, so I've got two feet in the beak. Yep. And now for a wing. I've made one wing already. So this is where the wadding comes in. A larger piece overall than the wing piece. Two wings right sides together on top of the wadding and then sew all around the edge to hold all three layers together. And then when okay. the wings are turned out the right way, they're sort of pre-stuffed. Just popping that into place. It's going crazy, so, so busy. Lots of you loving the budgies. I think everyone has a soft spot. Well, I have a soft spot for budgies because it reminds me of my Nana. She always had one. Does it? Yes. That's really funny because producer Hannah as well said this morning, because I said, oh, why, do you, why do you have a budgie? Why did, why did you want to get one? And she said, oh, my parents always spoke about having a budgie when they were younger and that it made her want to have one. And it's funny, isn't it, how you associate that maybe with, with other people? Yeah, it's... Uh, yes, always. I, and I, I think I would struggle not to call... I've said before, my nan, all my nana's budgies were called sweet. Really? <laughs> yeah. Sweet or tweet? Sweet. Sweet. I don't, sweet, I don't sweet. know why, but yeah. <laughs> all budgies are sweet. To me, no. Ah. So there we go. I've stitched all around the side, and it's quite a tight cut corner at the bottom. Just show that so just needle down and just pivot and take it slowly, a couple of stitches at a time. Okay. okay. And now I'm going to trim away the excess wadding from around the sides. It does give it as well, from a sensory perspective, a slightly different. It gives it a nice feel, doesn't it? It's something nice to. It does. To sort of the bit to play with, really. If they had, I mean, you could put filling in and lightly, just very lightly fill them, but there's a chance it would sort of have a shoulder almost. It would look like a beefed up body. It would <laughs> a bodybuilding body. Yeah, a body, one that's been to the gym. Okay. Be like that. <laughs> and then I'm going to clip the seam allowance. V shaped notches for the external corners, like here. It's quite a tight corner, so I'll put a couple close together. As well, though, these aren't just for children. These are nice, could, you know, just to have around the house. You could have them on a bookshelf or you could have them just sort of appearing, couldn't you, in various... You could. I love in the studio, there's often one perched on a shelf. Just somewhere. Just... You can see them in our little hexagon shelves on the corner or you spot them somewhere. I did say, oh, can we start the show? We had a debate this morning of whether we could try and make a budgie fly across your screens and sort of throw <laughs> it in a, in a way that made it look like it was flying and it didn't want to turn out very well. I think we need to rig up some sort of... High wire. Yeah, we need like a zip line. <laughs> or, you know, I, I don't know how many of you are into this as well, but I know so many people that love the, the elf that you do at Christmas. You yes. know, the one that you, you arrange and you do all different things. That reminded me of that because my friend did the elf on a zip wire, but did the sort of fishing <laughs> line across the lounge. We could do that with a budgie. Well, we've had a question in from Lynn. Morning, Lynn. Um, hi, lovely show on making the budgie. Can you tell me how tall the budgie stands? Let me grab... You, do you want to carry on, Joe, and I'll measure? Do you know, I said I didn't need a ruler this morning, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a tape measure. I've got a tape measure here, so that's fine. He's bigger than a real budgie. He is, would you say, 18 centimetres? Yeah, 18, I think. Eight, about 18 centimetres, so just over seven inches. About seven inches. 
Hope that helps, Lynn. <laughs> so they've V-shaped notches around the curves. I'll just turn this out and then I'm going to lightly press it, but not, I want the iron nice and cool really, because otherwise it will just flatten the wadding, the wadding and it'll become a bit crispy. I had a lesson from um, Joy on wadding and it was all about which wadding to use for which things and not ironing them and making them completely flat. And let me move this. So I'm just going to roll the seam between my fingers just to Get the shape, loose thread. Okay. I've got too many wires this morning. I'm not sure if the iron. Yes, it is on. We're good. So it's just really to get rid of some creases. So I'm not. I'm not really even pressing. Just allowing lightly. the full weight of the iron. There we go. Not skimming it. Let's just roll this seam out a bit. So we've got the beak, we've got the feet, as we know they're not called, but what we, do, <laughs> we don't know another name for them. And we've got wings as well, ready now. There we go. And the last thing is the tail, and it's done in exactly the same way as the wings. Also, the, wad the wadding in the tail as well? Wadding, yes, just to give it, again, a bit of a... A bit of thickness and if you wanted you could put I've not done it on this one but if you wanted to sort of quilt stitch lines on the wings and the tail yeah that would be nice you could just have a, a bit more sort of texture as well wouldn't it it would there we go. or even lines actually sort of going through just to like yeah give it a bit of like a curve yep the shape of the feathers and things there's the pepper there we go Needle down. Please do check out your baskets on these. We've only got Barry and Bertie. Um, over 20 people with Barry in their baskets. So QJGC11, which is the blue one, and then Bertie is the turquoise one. So there's two different colourways that we've got left in stock this morning. Barry is this one here. <laughs> right, so trimming away the excess wadding and then I'll clip the corners I'm just going to clip these into these corners so it's a very similar process to the wings it is there we go and I'll turn this out this is the tail here it does help it sort of stand away from the body as well it does it sort of kicks up slightly so it can lean back a bit gives it something to sort of stand against over 50 barries have been checked out now. They're all flying off to their new nests. <laughs> there we go. I won't give that a press. I'll crack on. But there we go. There's the okay. tail as Do well. You want this or should I pop that away? And then that go. No, nope, we're all good. Done with now. <laughs> He's just leaning on the iPad. Look at him on the screen. So casual. He's just like, having a lean. <laughs> what was that of the fox this morning? We're doing well, aren't we? Right, I'll assemble Sorry, the head. Barry. <laughs> Put your arm down, Barry. Right, this is the lower back head. And this is the... Let's get that the right way round. The top part of the head. I'm going to sew them together along this curved seam. And it's a bit fiddly at the end. There's a little bit of a turn. But just take it slowly and reposition, sort of stitch by stitch for the, just at the end. It's not too tricky. When you are designing these, do you find with the creating the different shapes for the... Because I always think it's the face and the head that really gives it the character or the personality or makes it sort of really look like that particular animal. How do you find getting the specific... making those templates and do you have to play around with different shapes, really, until you find something that really works? You do. I always start with... a. Uh, full size to scale illustration. So I draw what I want to make and I'll draw it from the front and from the side. And then with tracing paper, I'll take a pattern from those drawings. But it won't be, I mean, it's never, almost never spot on first time round. So no. then, like a plastic surgeon, I will draw <laughs> on the sample I've just made 
where the seams need to be altered, where I need a bit more, where I need some taken off. Give it some liposuction or trim bits away until you get to what, what you want. Absolutely. And then um, I will amend the templates accordingly. There we go. There's one side of the head. Okay. And then do you have a process after that to sort of show them to anyone sort of say, oh, does this look... What, what's, what's the next step once you've done that with the pattern? The next... And then I will make another one and check. And if it only needs the slightest alteration, I'll often do it by hand, maybe taking the seam a little bit by hand. But then once I'm happy with the pattern, I draw up the templates and... Away you go. It's all done. But the, I've always found the better the starting illustration that I'm working from, the better the first... Um, the first toy the will be. Yeah. So it really does um, pay to spend time and get the illustration just right. Are you good at drawing then? You must be. I'm okay at drawing, yeah. yeah. I can, yeah. Did, you do, did you do sort of art and stuff when you left school? No, I did my A-level art and then I got a temp job. I was taking a year out and then... The company was taken over and then they trained me up. So that was that, really. And then before you knew it, you were just... But, <laughs> and then that's what it was. Well, the temp job was at the toy, was at the... Um, it was, it was... In a... manufacturing toys, wasn't it? But more in, from a, a bigger perspective rather than on a smaller... Yes, the company of... I worked for, they did... Um, they didn't design toys particularly, but they were taken over by a company that did. And so the design team then trained me up to make... Sort of samples and but I would make the prototypes and design the pattern, but then it would they would go to the Far East. And then they were made in what I was trying and to say was in bulk. bulk. Yes. They were making like big manufacturing of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, yes. animal, of little animals and I think I've had one toy that was made that over a hundred thousand of it were made. Really? That's, yes. Wow. Right, I was about to race on then and not say what I was doing. So, so you're just sewing those two bits together. So this is sort of that bit in the back of the head. Should we show it on here? This part. So it's there. Would it be there like that? That's it. So you can just see there at the sides. Okay. So then what's the next part? Is it this bit? I'm doing this bit. I'm just going to join it together along the front here. So I've put them right sides together. I'm just going to sew along the front. There. So you're going to end up with three pieces to then assemble, aren't you? Yes. Less than 20 barriers in stock now, which is this cornflower blue one you can see here. Um, QJGC11. Because you can get three out of that as well, and possibly even maybe squidge a fourth, that's sort of seven or eight pounds per toy. You know, you pay that for a toy, don't you? It's not. You would easily. Easily. There we go. So that's the underbeak section. This bit here. That bit there. So I'm going to base the beak now to this bit and then... Oh, okay. So you're going to do the beak and then you're going to pop the top of the head on. Yes. I'll base the beak onto here and then I'll join those two parts and then sort of assemble the head in one go. So to get the beak in the right position, and it's quite important that it's central because there's a slight corner at the top. I line that up with the top of this underbeak section and I'll sew from the top down one side, baste it in, into position and do the same, go back to the top and do the same on the other side. And you can use a, a slightly wider stitch so they can come out if they're not quite, if the beak's not quite straight. So I'll just put... So working from the centre rather than across so it, you don't want it to shift over. There's a real chance it will yeah. shift. Is that because of the thickness of the felt? It, and just sometimes the pressure of the foot can make things slide ever so slightly. So I've basted it onto one side and I'll go, I need this bit on top this time. To start in the middle, you have the beak on top doing one side and then this bit on top for the other. I'll just bring this round and baste this side. Do you have to use a different foot when you work with felt or is it fine just to use your regular? I use my regular foot. Sometimes I use a quarter inch foot when I'm making toys, but usually I just stick with one like this because there's often a mark on the foot at the quarter inch, six millimeter point. And I work from that. There we go. Let's see, more visible on this side. I've just 
inside the seam allowance, just stitch the beak in place. Yeah. I'll just show that there. Yeah. You can just see here. Okay. And then I'm going to sew these pieces on in one, in one go, but I'm going to join them together first at the top. So I'm just going to, going to sew the, them together to this seam, sort of that sort of area. This is the, um, this is Bertie. He's not quite finished, but he's nearly there. So this is the uh, part that you can see that Joe's making at the moment, just assembling this top head section. This is Bertie, and this one's Barry. What's the one? Two little something sitting on a wall, one, one named Peter, Peter, one named Paul. <laughs> this is one name Barry, one name Bertie. It doesn't really fit, does it, at all? I don't know why scan. I thought of that. That doesn't quite scan properly. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it just didn't have the ring to it. <laughs> oh, they all think I'm mad upstairs. They're all laughing at me. So I've joined this top bit together, but left this bit open. So then later I have the flexibility it's to... So actually it's that That's way. the way it will go like that. So but just leaving that top part open there. But not stitching it all the way down the back. Otherwise then the head is sort of sealed and it's difficult to attach. It's yes, sealed I remember all the way around the neck. With the bear. Once you, if you do the whole head so it's sort of cylindrical, then you've got to work with a really a, tight circle to stuff it and to... It is, it. It's virtually impossible. So I finger press this seam open in the centre. I'm going to line up that seam and sew again from that central point to make sure it's all even and lined up. Sew down one side and then I'll return and sew along the other side. That reminds me of yesterday we had Paul Clark in and we were doing a mini me shirt. So if, we, if any of you saw it, this like a, for a child's shirt. Yeah. And the same with putting in a sleeve if you do it fully, you know, as the whole sleeve on a six to 12 month old shirt. It's tiny, like doing the whole yes. head. So we're doing it with darts or with a gather instead, you know, rather than. And sewing should be relaxing and fun and not, not stressful. No. Was it first, must have been first week back for your boys this week, was it? It was. So uh, was they it? were up early and dressed. So they were clearly excited. They, about were they their looking friends. forward to going back to school? They were. That's good. That's a good thing. And how, well, how about you? Were you looking forward to... Because some mums I've spoken to were, couldn't wait and others were dreading it. It just depends, doesn't it? I quite like them being... Having other people other than themselves. They, they do tend to bicker with each other, so it's quite nice <laughs> that they have limited time with each other in a it day. It it down a bit. It does. And then they enjoy each other's company rather than it being just... Not they do. Heads. They come yeah. home then, they play together and they're happy to see one another. So I've stitched from the top down one side and then I'm going to close this side in the same way. Okie doke. So put it that way. Start to really sort of see the face coming together now. But doing it like this does mean it's much easier to get the beak positioned and it's a really key sort of feature. It almost has that, it's that slant that just sort of runs off the edge of the head, doesn't it? It sort of, it has that, I don't know if you can just see there, but just, it was the angle, actually, that I think makes it look very budgy-like. Well, they, it's almost sort of rounded the top of the beak and it, it does sort of drop down, doesn't it? This one is Barry, with your grey, your blue. So the Barry bundle, you get everything you need to make three budgies. You've got a metre and a half of fabric. You've got your felt, your thread, your skein of embroidery thread for the eyes. You've got wadding, um, the filling, and also all of your instructions that Joe's written. So you get your templates in there and step-by-step -step instructions for the whole process. So if there's any little step you're not sure on, you can go back and refer to those. And three budgies in that bundle. Then you've also got the Bertie bundle, which is our turquoise one without, which is what Joe's actually working with at the moment. This is to make this one with the spot-on wings. Which is the most popular? Is it Bertie or Barry? Barry's in the lead, but here's Bertie. He's not quite finished. And this bundle, again, you get a metre and a half of fabric, so you can make three little Berties.
Now also, just as a little note, if something is in your basket, um, the way it works is that's not actually secured as yours until you've checked out your basket and you've gone all the way through and sort of put your payment details in. So normally it's fine if we've got a lot of stock, it's not a problem. But if it is in your basket and you haven't checked it out, that isn't a guaranteed order. And because this is incredibly popular this morning and with things that do sell out really quickly, you might sometimes find that if you leave it in there till the end of the show or for an hour or two, that when you go back to it, it isn't there anymore. There's no stock left. So um, particularly with Barry, we're really limited on, it seems so funny to me just sort of saying it like a name like that. And we are very, very limited on stock with Barry now. So nearly more people with that in baskets than there are in stock. So you do just need to check it out just if you don't want to miss out this morning. Okay. okay Thanks so for that. I'll get the, I'll get the like grown up part out of the way <laughs> and then we can carry on. So that's the, the head um, done to as far as it needs to be at this point. When sewing this on, again, there's a slight corner here. Just pause with the needle down and reposition the fabric for this sort of lower part of the seam. So this part of the seam here, pause with the needle down there and reposition. And then the back of the head, if we turn it around, you can see is still open. So that when we sew it on later, we, if it was closed like that, it would be, it'd be tight and difficult to sew round, but because it's open, it's not so difficult to then pivot this round and attach it to the body. It sort of stays a bit more malleable, doesn't it? Easier it does. to work with. Okay, so we're gaining parts, body parts here. Look, we've got a queue here ready to go. So now do we go on to the body? The stomach, so yeah, I'm going to, going to sew this seam here just to join, so right sides together, the two stomach pieces, I'm going to sew it together along the front. Should be quite quick now, so I'll... Actually, yes, it's tummy and then the back part and then it's assembly, isn't it? It is. The budgie's quite a quick one. He does want to wobble, though. Come on. There he is. There we go. So that's the front seam done and I'm going to baste now the feet in position. And with the feet... I'm going to put the folded side towards the centre, like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's the seam side towards the centre, but try to have them both the same, facing in, either both facing inward. Don't have one seam to the centre and one fold. Just try Are keep you them... referring to this part here on the side of the yes. foot? Yes. So you want either the two seams facing inwards or the two folds. Okay, yeah. Okay. And there are markers on the pattern for the position of the feet. So I'll just... Base those into position. There's one. Get that the correct way around. Is that just so they sit nice and flat? And also they do sort of act as a um, preventing them from completely wobbling over, don't they? Like they a do. counterbalance with the tail. They do, they really help to keep them stood up. So the feet are on, and then this is the base. Let's show that there. Yep. Okay. So they're based to the right side of the fabric. Yeah, so it kind of folds. So it we'll fold, fold down those back, and then when we put the base bit over, they will sandwich the feet in. So when that's turned, the feet will be on the right side. I'm with you. Okay, so basted to the right side of the stomach and then I'm going to start with the base. And there are markers just to keep, keep it on track. So a central one to line up with the seam and then ones to line up with the feet. So then the base is going right side together with the stomach? It is. Okay. I do have to be careful. Sometimes I just talk as though I'm writing the pattern. Um, <laughs> Clip V-shaped notches into the seam allowance all around the Just curve. Do, I, I, like I do find do myself this. sounding a little bit robotic. As well, I imagine when you're writing, say particularly for a magazine, that if there are limits on word counts or you know how many things, how much you space you've got, or so you're trying to keep it all, you want it to be concise and clear, but at the same time, you know, you don't want anything fluffy or anything extra that you don't yes. really need. So there's no, you know. Well, I do. I, I always put fluffy and extra in, and I know that it the, gives it personality. I like something it with then. a bit of personality <laughs> rather than just like you say. Insert into here and do da da da. There we go. So the feet are, are in, and if because they're straight into the seam, you can go back and 
stitch over a couple of times just to make sure they're really secured. I would go back because I've taken slightly less than the seam allowance there, so I would just go back over that. But I'll crack on. These okay. are the side bits. Over 120 budgies have now found homes today. We're going to compete with your 100,000 toy. <laughs> <laughs> toy that was distributed. It was one of my favourite stories about my mother-in-law when I said, oh, they've ordered more than 100,000 of that, of that toy. And she said, oh, that's going to take you forever. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Was she being serious? Yes, she absolutely. Oh, yeah. are you joking? <laughs> That's brilliant. In that case, I'd never want anyone to order more than no, five. five please, yeah, no, please stop ordering the budgies. That's so funny. I'm just imagining you like on a conveyor belt, just making this animal on repeat or whatever it was up there. It was a mouse. A mouse. I would have, yes been overrun with mice. <laughs> and no one wants that. No. There we go. So I'm just quickly sewing the side body onto the stomach. <laughs> That's really tickled me. I'm just imagining you like in a factory <laughs> trying to... She was really trying shocked. I just... thought I was going to have to sew over 100,000 <laughs> mice. What did you say? Were you like, no, no, no. That's, just, <laughs> that's not the case. There we go. So that's one side joined on and I'm going to sew the other one on in the same way. Okay. And there's a marker on here for where this to line seam up with the seam fall, of the base and the stomach. Just to keep it on track. I'll try and speed up a bit now. And... No, we're all good. We're chilled. I'll try to remember to put wings in as well. I did start to join the head on. This week and think, oh, it's, it doesn't go not, in that order. I'm not giving it any wings. <laughs> so, if everybody with Barry in their basket checks it out this morning, there are only less than 10 of those in stock. So, QJGC11, 22.95, and you'll get three Barrys out of that bundle. There are a couple more Bar uh, Berties, <laughs> Barty Bertie, a couple more Berties, but again, limited on stock on that one too. So, just would encourage you to check out your baskets or give the call centre a ring. Okay, so there's the body. There he is. And I'm going to base the wings so the right side of the body and making sure that the wing is sort of curving towards the back of the body. Yes, I was about to say is there a right Otherwise, side yes. of the fabric, but it's not from that point of view. Otherwise. It's more to do with the... We don't want them paddling forwards. <laughs> no, no, no. They're all flying backwards. So I'll base the ends of these clothes just because they're easier to deal with if they're sealed at the top. When I was younger, and as still even now with some birds, I used to have a really bad phobia of birds. Phobias are so irrational, aren't they? You can't really. But I particularly, I hated pigeons, chickens, anything like that. It. I don't. I, I think it was to do with just I didn't like them when they sort of flap. It just really used to freak me out. It's weird, isn't it? And I'm fine with spiders, snakes, anything like that. I'm okay with. But birds, which seemed ridiculous, really did used to frighten me. It's spiders for me, and I know they're not going to do me any harm, and no. they're fine, but if I'm surprised by one, I will scream. But that's scream. the thing, you know in your head, don't you? The, the rational part of you goes, oh, don't be ridiculous. Yeah. And then before you know it, you just find yourself just in this sort of hysterical... Oh, I'm being told Lucy Brennan's scared of sheep. I didn't know that one. <laughs> Good thing she doesn't do knitting and wool and work with wool. That's why she sticks to quilting. <laughs> so the wings go... They start at that seam, and then there's a marker so that they can be lined up. So I'll pop that edge in line with that seam because we want this part to follow the wing down. Ah, so this lines up, you can see here. Also, Lynn, who messaged in about the height of the budgie, it's seven inches, so we said 18 centimetres, didn't we? About, for the, about the height of our budgie here this morning. Okay, and now the body can be joined to the head. Now, sometimes I'll sew from the centre out, but with this, it's, it's not too big and actually it's quite flexible. It's not a tight curve at all, so I'll start from one side and sew all the way across. Okay. But it's nice to get these seams lined up in the centre, so you could always pop a pin in. Are you conscious as well of, like we just said, with that curve going down from the back of the head into the wing, obviously that's using the same fabric. Is that the bit that you'd be most aware of trying to get yes. nice and neat, just here? So if you wanted, you could start at the centre, line those seams up and work out from either, 
from the centre each time. You're just trying to get that connection there through the, through the side of the head. If you put a pin in a toy when you're making it, make sure they all come out. Yeah, double check. To double really check. keep track of pins. I'm just going to open this seam out. This has been a really quick one, hasn't it? It is, it's quite a fast make. Our chatter of budgies. That's, that's the great thing as well about the bundle, that you have got the enough in there to make three. You've got enough fabric in there to make three, possibly four, we think. It depends, you know, sort of how you cut and things. But if you want to make a little group of them, a little family, or if you've got a couple of little children that you want to give them to, then there is enough there to do that. Producer Hannah's saying they, the budgies prefer to be in groups or you could just make one and put it in front of the mirror so it doesn't yes. feel like it's on its own. <laughs> we know what Hannah gets up to in her evenings. She just sits in front of the mirror with the budgie and just says, here you go. <laughs> Glass of wine, budgie and a mirror. <laughs> there we go. So I've not done the greatest job of that, but there we go. We'll get the idea. Okay. So that's the head. Joined to the body. Ta. And the last thing is the tail. So I'm going to go back to the top and sew down to about here because we need to leave an opening in the back. But I'll start by joining the body at the bottom for a couple of inches and then I'll slot the tail in and sew This one's across. Bertie. Also as well, so when you did that for the stuffing, you wouldn't leave the gap between where that join is between the head and the back. You would do it slightly further down. Is that just because... I, I would for personal preference. Yeah, rather um, than working in the, can, maybe a week, that might be a slightly weaker area where you've maybe assembled those two parts. I'd like to be able to get all the filling in the head before I close it because that's the bit. For me, that's the important bit that has to look right. The head is the important sort of bit. So I like yeah. to have all that sealed. There we go. So this is just joined together at the bottom. And this little opening now in the end, in the back, is just where the tail is going to be fitted in. And is that going to be right? I'm trying to think what that is. So that's right sides together. So the tail inside. inside. Raw edges. I'll just show that. So just been popped in there. And through to this bit at the bottom. Okay. And then I'm just going to sew straight across the end there, sandwiching the tail in place. So I'll do that really quickly and then... Just making sure that's nice and secure. You can imagine as well, if you gave that to a child, that would be the bit that might get pulled that. or tugged on a bit, wouldn't you? So It would. So turn it around the right way, happy with the position of the tail, go back and sew it over sew a couple of times just so it's really well secured. Yeah. And then return to the top and sew down, just leaving an opening. We sew to about there and leave an opening of, as long as you can get three or four fingers in there to get the stuffing in comfortably. That's... We have got time. Done. Would you mind just showing us the eyes? Yes. How we do, how oh. we do that? Go on to the eyes. We've so this is... Ready to do. The one that's done. And this is what I was saying about having the head closed. I think it's easier to get all the filling in the head, get that shaped the way that you want it, and then... I don't close the back right until the very end because I will often... So the eyes are just knots, French knots or colonial knots in the black thread. Do you halve that? Obviously, it's a six. I halve it yeah. and then double it over through the needle. So it's only taking six strands through when it goes. If you keep the thread undivided, when it bends through there, you've got the double thickness, so it's 12... Which is a little bit too much. ...strands. And I just knot the end and will take it in through the back so that the knot is held inside. A long needle's quite helpful for this. There we go. Do you mark where you're going to sew, or do you just do yes. one and then...? With this one, I know it's quite easy with the beak, but it's good to position... I do it about a quarter of an inch up, following the end of the, the beak, but marking them on with water erasable so pens, brilliant. Following that line there, a quarter of an inch here. And just sort of carrying that through with the line of the beat you can see on that side as well okay so i've got the knot held inside but i'll make just a little stitch there just to make sure it's anchored and then i'd like to do a colonial knot so i put the needle above 
the eye, bring it over, over behind the thread and then over that way. It's quite a difficult thing to do. And then pull it tight and I'll go straight through to the other eye. You've done that before. <laughs> I, I have done this before. That, well, you made that look so simple. Would you mind showing us once more on that other side? So again, I'll just make a little stitch just to anchor the thread. And then let's see if I can put the needle above the eye and then take the thread and wrap it from the front over. Let's see if I can keep this bit out of the way. So the thread goes over. Yeah. This is getting in the way. And then out on the right. And then I'll take it over this time again. To and the out left. on the left. And then hold that nice and tight at the end of the needle. Pull it tight so we've got the knot there. I'm going to take the thread back through to the first eye. You always say as well, connecting those two while they're inside helps to just sort of pull them in a little bit. It just does. Just pinches them slightly so they, again, it's a little bit more shape, isn't it, to the, to the face. So once I've done the knots, I'll just go back and two in between the eyes. And it does just pull them in slightly and it just gives the face a little bit more character. I don't want to go straight through the knot, but close to it. So just I'll, building it up. And just give it a little, little light pull. Make sure they're even in the same position. And I'll go through a few times like that, actually. Yeah, how and much it also you, secures the thread. How do you know when to stop, just from, from a visual perspective, yes, really? Yes, just when they look right, they look even. I'll just do, catch a tiny bit of fabric. And then, before the loop closes, feed my needle through it, just so it forms a knot and then push it into the head, out anywhere. Just pull it so it's nice and tight. And then I'll snip away the thread here. And that means there's a long tail of thread held inside the head as well, just so those eyes aren't going to come undone. So it's pulled in two places where you've got the knot and through, then you've got that strand going through the yeah, head. Yeah, so it shouldn't, because it's longer, it shouldn't work free. So those are the eyes. And then the last bit is just the back. The little, t no, little toe. Oh, they have little toe. toe stitching, so in a coordinating thread, just to divide those toes. Just, I didn't realise that they were Probably going... aren't toes. Oh, because this one's done. I've this done one, one. Yeah. So, so again, double the thread over, tied a knot the in the end. So that one there has already been done. And this is the one here. Okay. The nostrils on the beak are just two little stitches. But, uh, so they're easy enough. Again, in that black. So I'm bringing the needle up through the foot so the knot's on that side. And I'm going to go back, back through a couple of times through that original stitch where I went in, just to really secure the thread. You wouldn't use the black for this. You're you could do if you wanted a more definition between the toes. That would look nice. And it's quite a strong thread as well. So I'm, I'm going over the foot once, over the foot twice. This is like a, like a pedicure divider, you know, when they put the yes. thing between your toes. <laughs> Pull it nice and tight, and I'll do a couple of stitches and then secure the thread. I've gone in the correct place, there we go. Oh, there we go, I've managed to. I am quite heavy handed. So just a couple of times through that, you don't have to do that many at all, just two or three. Just two, I, I always just go over twice. And it just divides the toes, gives it that little bit more detail, and then. Okay. It is all in the detail. I do love the little extra sort of touches. Before the loop closes, I'm just going to secure the thread by doing that. And something like this, I'll do it three times. I'll go through. The last one. Make a stitch before the loop closes. Feed the thread through. And then just lock it. And then for a bit of extra, extra security, I'd feed do another couple of stitches, secure the thread, and cut it off. I'll just snip it away there, so that. There's our little feet. Now also, we in all of these bundles this morning, you do get your instructions from Jo, so I'm just gonna show you how thorough these are. If there are any steps that you weren't too sure of, or you think, oh, I, I missed that bit, you can always watch the show back on YouTube. You can go back on there and watch all of our previous shows, but the instructions here as well. 
all written by Joe. So everything you need to know, you've got the cutting out, you've got um, creating the beak, everything you need obviously is included in your bundle anyway. And then you've got these um, sort of ref reference numbers here to refer back to the photos. As you go through, so you've got making the feet, making the wings, everything we've talked through today, attaching the head and tail, adding the features, and then that finishing off. So looking at this, um, creating using the knots here to create the eyes and also with the nostril detail there on the beak. You've also got your templates here, and these are all to size, aren't they? So, they are. So does this include a seam allowance? It does. It the does. Quarter inch, six millimetre seam allowance throughout. It's all built in already. It is. So would you just suggest photocopying these and then using, yes. because you're making a couple, just go I through? I would do, and yes. And then we've got two options for our budgies this morning. So we've got Barry, which is this one here. So this is in the cornflower blue and in our grey. So if everybody checks out their baskets on this, we will have sold out of Barry, so you do need to check your basket out if you want that one. QJGC11, all of your fabric, your thread, your wadding, your filling, your instructions from Joe, and your felt as well for those uh, toes and the beak. And then we've also got Bertie, who is now pretty much there, isn't he? Just, he is. He's just got a little hole in his back. But this is Bertie, so this is the turquoise one. This is the one we've got a little bit more stock of, but still fairly limited, with the um, spot-on grey wings there, the bright optical white on the head, and your turquoise, AMGC22. If you've managed to get those this morning, well done. I'm glad you, if you missed it last time, hopefully you've managed to get a Bertie or a Barry this morning and you're gonna add a budgie to your collection. And Joe, you're back at 11. I am. We're doing the fox. We're doing the fox, we As are. As you saw this morning, he was just having a little lay <laughs> on the desk, so we're gonna be looking at the fox at 11. And also in the next hour, I'm looking at some of your favorite patterns. So we've got a dressmaking, um, lots of different options from McCall's and some different skirts and tops. So don't go anywhere, we'll see you in three minutes. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. It's easy to buy the products you see on our shows. To buy any of the items featured on today's programmes, just head over to our website, www.sewingquarter.com. Click on the video stream and you'll be taken to our watch page. Here you'll find the product that is on air right now at the top of the page. Beneath that, you'll find all the products demonstrated in this morning's shows. To add an item to your basket, simply log into your account or register with us. Then you can either check out or keep shopping. Remember, our flat rate delivery charge lets you shop all day and check out as many times as you like and only pay once for postage and packing. Only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 78. The Sewing Quarter website is simple and easy to use. You can view a live broadcast of the show on our homepage. Get instant access to our online shop, which has a wide range of wonderful products for you to choose from. You can also enjoy a selection of projects and guides which we have on offer to help you enhance your skills and gain valuable tips. Watch the live shows and you can buy the product which is currently being shown on air. You can even message the studio to ask our presenters or team any questions you might have. Below, you'll find all the products from today's show for you to look at and purchase. On the right of the screen, next to today's products, you will find our simple programme guide listing all upcoming shows. So, join us today at sewingquarter.com. Join us on Wednesday the 13th of September for a colourful hexy happy hour with guest Victoria Peat. English paper piecing dab hand Victoria lets no piece of fabric go to waste. With her steady hand and her keen eye for colour, she turns her offcuts into gorgeous EPP creations. Well, now we've armed Victoria with a stack of hexes and some of our finest fabrics, including prints from the popular Botanica range, as well as some gems from Tilda's Harvest Collection. Alongside host Natasha McCarty, she'll bring you an EPP demonstration that's bound to give you the piecing bug. So tune in at 9am on Wednesday the 13th of September for an hour of hexy fun with Victoria Peat. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78.
Good morning, welcome back. If you've just joined us here at Sewing Quarter this morning, I'm Amy Burrows and I've just been joined by Joe Carter in the last hour and we were making that lovely little budgie. So we had Barry and Bertie and Bruce. So if you managed to get one of those, congratulations. Please send us your pictures when you've made it. We'd love to see them. You can share them on our Facebook page and on our social media as well. Now in this hour it's wardrobe essentials so what we've done is we've brought back lots of your favourite patterns that we've had on the shows before some of them we've got made up samples of that our designers have made here on the show and also some of your favourite fabrics for dressmaking so something slightly different perhaps if you're not into toy making or you want to perhaps venture into, um, into dressmaking some lovely fabrics for that today. So I'm going to start with the most pop, one of the most popular fabrics, which is our poppy fabric. And this is a really lovely print for, um, you can make lovely little sort of um, tunic tops with this, maybe with pleated sleeves or with tulip or trumpet sleeves, something like that. Um, a smarter top or even a jacket, actually, if you were wearing a plainer dress and you wanted to jazz it up a bit, then there's some lovely options for these. Now also not just dressmaking, you could use both these poppy fabrics for home furnishing. So you could make some gorgeous cushions with these. They're really bright, bold prints with big motifs as well. So I'm going to start with the I'm going to start with the white background actually. And it's coming up to that time, isn't it? November. November the 11th, poppy time. So this here is our poppies on the white background, and this is a really great value fabric. It's 355 per half metre. So these are cut off the bolt for you. You can have as much or as little fabric as you like in half metre increments. So 355 per half metre, really great value and a really popular print here at Sewing Quarter. This is very popular for dressmaking, this fabric. They say there's um, somebody I know, their job, which I can't, it's crazy that it's a job, but their job is to actually um, pick colours for people and what works for their hair colour or their skin tone or for, you know, for everything, what colours work for you. And she always says that the one colour, and I never knew this, that everybody can wear is red. Apparently, regardless of skin tone or eye colour, hair colour, red is the colour that anybody can pull off. So if you do want to go for a bit of red this morning, then you've got that really quite boldly stated there in your poppy fabric and with your greens as well. So the large red poppy fabric on white. This also comes in another colourway. So this comes with a black background fabric too. Did anyone else see the poppies when they were at the Houses of Parliament? They were amazing. Just you walk out of the, of the um, station near Fenchurch Street, and it's just they were just incredible. Just this huge display of the poppies, and then they um, they actually I think they sold a lot of the poppies, didn't they? Online you could you could buy a poppy, and then they did some displays. I know they did a big display near me, um, and they're really those just they're very very iconic, aren't they? Start to, we'll all start to be having our poppies on again soon, wearing our poppy pins. But this is here on our black background. So again, those big motifs. Again, this is 100% cotton. And it's really great value at 355 per half metre. PSJQ35. And lots of sort of different, different shapes of the poppies here, if you look with the petals and... It almost looks like that's been painted on, actually. You've got some, some texture and some depth coming through with the different shades of red. Large red poppy print, and that's on the back background. And I will just show you that with the white in case you did want to mix and match those at all. There we go. So your darker option here and then the the light side here with your white. So the white's on the bottom of your screen there now, DNJQ37. I think that would be nice in a, um, oh, the Tower of London, not the Houses of Parliament. I got that, got that wrong. It's can't, I was gonna say it's early on a Saturday morning, but that's not an excuse because it is 10 o'clock now, so that's not really, it's not eight o'clock. Get your brain in gear, Amy. Not good. Okay, so that's our, that's the one on the white background. 
And then you also had the black one there. So those are your two poppy options. Now also we've got some enzyme washed linens this morning, which are very popular for dressmaking. Um, and these are actually, if I just, I'll bring them in for now. These are actually linens. So we have a lot of those um, linear look fabrics that have that, text, that textured cross-hatching detail. And um, like you saw, if you saw at eight o'clock this morning in the, uh, the pumpkin pie bundles, we pair them up with solids and things. These are actually linens. So they are, they're a different, um, they have a very different feel to them, a different texture, very breathable, nice and, um, they have a nice, a sort of a nice texture to them as well. So I'll start first of all, well, I'm not gonna do that one in a second because that's not a linen. So we'll start first of all with our grey. So again, you are getting that cross-hatching detail, but this is just because it's the nature of the fabric and the weave with that linen there. So you've got that sort of heron grey to start with. Grey goes with everything, I think. You know, it's got a sort of a sil... Actually, when it catches the light, it does have a silvery sheen to it. We made a, a blazer with Jennifer Mills earlier in the week, and we used one of these enzyme wash linens. And the enzyme wash just means it's got a slightly more, um, almost sort of a distress, it gives it a softer feel, a more natural feel, but also um, a slightly more distressed look to it. So rather than being a very solid block colour, you get a little bit more um, light and shade and texture coming through there. So that's the light grey. Let's fold this back up. Then we've also got duck egg blue. Again, catching the light with that sort of sheen there and the silver. You can just see some of that detail in the fabric if I lift that. Again, being sold by the half metre, BZJQ61. Now, I have a problem with the next one because it's called pink and I personally think this is purple but I would say this is maybe sort of a crushed raspberry sort of colour um, or a mauve. It's in my head this isn't a pink but it is called pink just to confuse you um, and this again is an enzyme washed linen so it is a linen rather than um, a cotton. ZPJQ57 for the pink slash mauve <laughs> linen. Then our next one is our taupe. This is producer Hannah's favourite one. Lots of these colours, what I like about these linens is that they're colours that would that would go with a lot. So if you perhaps if you had, you know, um, for lot, with, in lots of seasons, but also coming now into sort of time where you're going to need to wear a jacket, perhaps if you're wearing dresses to work or skirts and shirts and you need to have something extra, just a, a little extra layer, especially if you've got aircon in the office. It's like we have, a, we have the aircon on in here, we all freeze to death. And um, so if you want a jacket or something to go with it, linens are lovely for that. So this is the beige. Also, these linens are nice if you want to make a, a bag, sort of a, a shopper bag or something to take, you know, I know Jennifer as well was saying about using a bag to take to go and buy all her vegetables and things, but, um, you know, we've just got something with a nice natural feel to it. I always think a linen has a sort of a farmhouse quality to it, particularly the beige and the sort of grey colours. Then we go to a very smart classic navy, so this would be lovely with denim or with jeans if you wanted to perhaps make a blazer to go with that. Always going to go well with a sort of all denim, really. I know if you're also looking nice with some of the bolder colours, so maybe a bright sort of pumpkin orange, though some of those autumnal ones we were looking at this morning, or again with a red. And we've got one final colour, which is our turquoise. So this is a slightly bolder blue than the duck egg blue we saw before, slightly darker. Let's just move that over. I'm just going to mix and match quickly. Those two blues, what do they look like? Mm. So the duck egg here and you've got the um, turquoise here on, well, on my left. But they work really, they would be lovely for cushions. 
if you wanted to mix and match some sort of scatter cushions, maybe for um, to go on the bed or on the sofa. And then for more classic uh, dressmaking, I would, I mean, grey and navy or the beige and navy. A very classic combinations, I would say. Oh, what have I done there? Sort of a um, mushroomy grey. Or with the beige, I'll show you the navy. Oh, yes. You, oh, a nice blazer with you. could use this linen for um, like a trim. It would be really lovely, almost like a binding. Let me just move that grey one so you can just see those two. So all of those linens, 5.95 per half metre. Giving you some fabric options this morning because I'm going to look at some, some really uh, popular patterns that we've had on the show. So I'm um, just giving you some different fabric ideas that you might want to utilise for. We've got skirts, we've got dresses, we've got shirts, we've got children's um, dresses as well. So just some different um, fabric options. Now the poppies are going really, really quickly this morning. Which one's more popular? The white. So I'll just quickly show you this. I mean, it does change very quickly, but this is the poppies on white. We've got a top made up in this, so I'll show you that in a sec. Also, with these fabrics, if you do want more than a metre and a half, we just advise you to ring the call centre, so that number on your screens, rather than doing it online. Sometimes people struggle to add sort of multiple increments on the website. But we are, it is a, we are working on that, I can assure you. And just a reminder of the black one as well. In the other colourway. We've used these fabrics in a lot of projects. I always think the ones we use as well, sort of, if we're choosing to use them, our designers are choosing to use them, it usually says a lot about how popular the fabrics are. So this is uh, on the black option, the black background. Oh, and the black's just caught up with the white. Edging forward, PSJQ35, 355 per half metre. And that's the large red poppy print on black. And again, once more, I'll just show you those together if you wanted to pair them. I mean, now I'm just getting fussy, but you could do a jacket and then you could have the facing on the inside in the alternate one, couldn't you? That would be really nice. Or reversible. Oh, you could do a reversible jacket. Oh, that's a lovely idea. Producer Hannah's saying, if you were doing a monochrome quilt, maybe something with lots of blacks and whites, you could use this as a backing fabric. So you, on the back, you've got a splash of, obviously you've got um, your whites and blacks there and you'd have, to, you'd have to patch it together as it's not a really big wide back piece, but you'd have a splash of red on the back of a quilt. And you could follow these lines, couldn't you? Do some, some um, free motion quilting. Black's in the lead, so we'll see which one, which one edges out in front. Now, our last uh, fabric options for our dressmaking this morning, we've got some denim look fabrics. Now, these are from Art Gallery, and they are denim look, so they're not actually denim, they are a cotton. So the lovely thing about that is rather than it being too heavy or that you need to change your needle or change your foot um, on your sewing machine, you're still keeping it with a nice, lightweight, breathable cotton, easy to work with, um, but with that denim look to it. So this one is called pointel, and this is a, which is a type of stitch. So it almost this almost looks stitched, or like a stamp. Actually, it looks like someone's done a. Well, it's got a, that cross hatching detail in it. So it almost looks like someone's gone into this with some detail and really stitched these into place. But it is a on a denim coloured navy background there. This is a really superior quality fabric from Art Gallery incredibly soft and just you can see there with that stitch detail
and also a lot of the patterns for some of those lighter tops so we've got some nice sort of floaty tops in this hour with different sleeve variations and things and a denim just wouldn't it wouldn't drape properly it wouldn't hang you know you wouldn't get that nice sort of flowy feminine feel to it whereas with this you will still get that because it's a, in fact if I hold if I open it out a bit you'll see this you know this moves like a cotton it is a cotton so it's not overly heavy and as well for children perhaps you don't want to put them in a heavy denim especially if they're doing lots of running around and moving and you know this keeps it nice and free and lightweight and from a distance again that just looks like a big polka dot but up close you get to see that there's a bit more detail in that point tail PZHN96 11.45 per half meter but we've also got two other uh, denim look fabrics from Art Gallery. Okay. Next up is our diamonds. Let's open that one here. So you've got lots of different designs within the diamonds here. Um, again, you've got that navy, that classic navy sort of denim look background, but you've got some, this is almost like a cup crystal. You've got florals, you've got um, different sort of square detail here as well. Like kites or you know, with your uh, diamond. So the diamond arcuate there, or almost like little windows actually peeping through. I wonder about a man's shirt made out of that one. I think that could work. OXHN17. And then we've also got one further, one last uh, denim look fabric from Art Gallery. These are really soft, sort of, um, got quite a silky touch to them actually. I'd wear a dress made out of this. I would definitely wear a dress made out of this. So this is a half, this is a half meter or a meter. I've got a meter here. Oh, that's really strange. Producer Hannah just said in my ear, a little dress made out of this. You'd look like Miss Honey from Matilda. And I went to see Matilda on Wednesday in London. It's so good. One of my friends is actually in it. He plays Matilda's brother. And, um, and it's, it, oh, it's such a brilliant show. If you haven't seen it, I would, highly highly recommend a visit it's on at the Cambridge Theatre in London and um, the music is so so clever it's if you don't know if you haven't well the film is obviously great anyway it's a classic isn't it but the um, the lyrics are written by Tim Minchin and they're so clever it's there's just little, lots of little subtle things that have built into it and when you really listen to it and listen to the words and the children in the show are honestly they are inc you can't take your eyes off them they're just incredible I'd if you get a chance to go into London and to see a show, Matilda would be really up there for me. It's, it was incredible. And my friend Dan was very good as well. So if you're watching Dan, morning. So um, this one here is your denim on a, a it's got that, that classic denim background, but you've got a lovely sort of floral, almost like a tulip growing up through this one with that. And this almost looks like a stitch detail if you look here in the background. That's the sort of pattern, really, you might really struggle to get on an actual denim, but because this is a cotton, you can go for something that, that, that detailed. OCHN57. I can't believe you said that, Hannah, about Miss Honey. What strange coincidence. He just loves Matilda. I love when she gets the, she gets the newt, doesn't she, in the cup in Miss Trunchbull's. Um, so she doesn't go to the chokey. She manages to tip the cup over, and then the newt goes in Miss Trunchbull's glass. And the bit as well where they swing the little girl around by the pigtails. <laughs> so there are, I'm clearly in love with Matilda. So we've got, um, the, going back to the poppies, because these have been so, so popular. There's only seven units of which one? The, of the black. So the poppies on black, we've only got three and a half metres of this left in stock now. So please do check out your baskets. PSJQ35. You can see that poppy fabric there. 3.55 per half metre, but just a warning that there are only seven units of that left in stock. And then also we have the white option, which I'll show you once more. Got a little bit more stock of this one. Oh, 
Oh, we should wear this for Poppy Day in November. We should get a shirt made up out of this. You can see your white background there and your leaves and obviously the statement motifs. Or actually, if you were wearing a plainer outfit, say perhaps in a, you know, a black dress or something like that, a big statement bag made out of this. And you could even do, actually, you could create, um, in one of the books we've made it before, a 3D flower brooch that you could add on to the bag as well in the poppy. So you could make a poppy out, or a flower out of the poppy fabric. I think that would look really cool. 355 per half metre. So if you do want to make a statement bag to go with a little black dress, we've got all oh, the books. Where's our book gone? Oh, we're on here. I thought they were behind me. This one here is our little black dress book. Now, this, um, this one here is about making a dress that perfectly fits and tailors you. Now, we all know, obviously, black is a very flattering colour. And also, a, little bla a black dress that's been made to measure to fit you perfectly is going to just be something you feel really comfortable in and that you get out the wardrobe. It's a, ca a capsule piece, isn't it, really, that you get out time and time again. So this book here is about finding a dress shape that really works for you and then obviously using your measurements to tailor that accordingly. So I'll just show you the front cover there, the little black dress. This would be a nice gift book actually if someone's maybe just getting into dressmaking or perhaps someone that's really into fashion. So you can just see here, I don't know if that's just catching the light there, that the dress is... There's some history on the little black dress and the different icons going through the ages, you know, through that timeline of where we've seen different styles of dress become, you know, be introduced. So sort of like you've got the mods generation there and then moving through into different dresses that have been seen maybe at the Oscars or at the BAFTAs. Oh, and as well, Princess Diana, the little black dress. Been some incredible documentaries on recently, haven't there, about Diana? Still makes me cry. Still, that's, it's funny, isn't it, how things still just touch you. Then as you go through here, you've got, you've got some in, just general information on dressmaking and different sort of techniques that you would incorporate. So with your curves, whether you're using those for a princess seam or for a sleeve. Then as we go through, once we get through all of that, so there's lots of info there, I want to get to the section with the actual dresses. So also what it starts with is it, it, you're encouraged to create a block. So using your measurements, creating a generic sizing for a body um, that you can then use and tailor to make different dresses. So it really, in, some, in a lot of detail, goes through how to measure yourself and how to create the block um, that perfectly fits you. And then you can use that as almost a template, really, or a guide, like your own mannequin, um, to then make your own dresses from that. So you can see how thorough this is a really, uh, you know, intricate instruction guide into how to create your block. And once you've got it, I know this, I appreciate this probably all looks very samey, but it is just talking you through all of the steps by that. And you, you kind of, this is what you need. When you get the book home, you need this. It references every single step of the, of the journey into making your block. And by taking the time to do that and really measure properly and create that, you then get to tailor a dress. This is the section where you get to the dresses that is going to fit you. So talking about what's going to suit your shape, whether you're, you know, a column, whether you're square, whether you're round, top heavy, bottom heavy, hourglass. And then talking you through the fabric choices, depending on which sort of style you're making or how you want it to drape. So rather than just having something, particularly as we come into thinking about maybe making dresses for Christmas party season, you know, a little black dress or New Year even. So then we get into the dresses themselves and these have all been named after icons that you'll know and love. So you've got the Audrey. Then we go through. Producer Hannah saying that sort of dress reminds me of Emma Willis. I think it's a very flattering shoulder cut there. I like something that just sort of starts to cover your shoulder and also where it's, with it slightly longer, but obviously that's something that you can change. But I think just below the knee as well is a really, um, not only flattering, but it's, it's a very sophisticated look. 
And oh, I can't read that upside down. Oh, Greta. Or Greta. So another different dress option there. Let me skim through to the photo so you can see. Where's the photo? There it is. So that's more of a sort of wraparound dress with a nice tie. And then we've got Marilyn. So this is an off-the-shoulder dress. And again, every element of this can be tapered to slightly change it, to, you know, change the length or to change how it's going to fit on you. So a shorter version there, but you can obviously amend that. And then a little black jacket as well to go with that, to team with it. If you can just see it here. If you want to cover the tops of your arms. And then you've also got the uh, little black hat or a fascinator. So a really intricate guide into lots. So you've got little black dress options in there, but really focusing on making something that's going to fit you well. So using your block to tailor something that's going to, you know, to, to fit your shoulders, to fit your arms, to fit your waist and make it really feel like it's, you know, it's made and tailored for you and that it flows. So that's the little black dress book. Then you've also got a tailoring and alterations book. So this is more of a general, rather than being a project-led book, this is more about um, sort of a Bible, if you like, into all of the guidelines you would need for all sorts of alterations and tailoring. So if you've got talking you through hems, waistlines, um, waistbands, sorry, seams, sleeves, pockets, cuffs, um, darts, tucks, fastenings, necklines, linings. And then as we go through here, and it is a very thick book, actually, but you can see here really intricate diagrams. And maybe as well sometimes you hear us, um, you know, talking about things and you think, oh, I don't actually know how you do that. Maybe if there, and if there are other things as well, by the way, please let us know. You can um, send us an email if there are things we skim over. But this book breaks it down into chapters. I'm going to show you here into different garments so it divides it into a sort of dresses trousers skirts jackets and even into smaller items like ties and bow ties and waistcoats and then from there it tackles all of the different elements that you might I'm going to skip to a chapter so you can see but let's just take skirts for example and then it talks you through all the alterations that you might want to make to a skirt so shortening a hemline lengthening a hemline Altering it so for a skirt that's cut on the bias. And then adjusting an elasticated hem uh, waist waistband. We need that one for Christmas. <laughs> Making it smaller. Replacing a drawstring. I mean, you can use that as well for trousers or for pyjamas. Or... Then letting out the side seams at the hip. So this really is breaking it down into thorough and thorough detail, but lots of helpful little things that you might not be sure on. And sometimes it's nice to have that in a book form rather than, um, you know, just looking up. You've got that there. You can have this next to your sewing machine and refer to it as a guide. And also sometimes things as well. You, we have become sort of quite a... Um, we follow, we, we've become quite disposable, really, haven't we? Because there are so many shops now on the high street where items are, are, so, are so cheap, and it means that we sort of buy things and you might only wear them a couple of times, or if they don't fit anymore, or if you get a hole in it, you, you throw it away or you don't keep hold of it. Whereas this, particularly if you do invest in items or if you're making them yourself, you really want something where you know, it's going to stand the test of time and have some longevity to it. Rather than throwing it away, if you've changed size or changed shape or you get a hole or a tear in it, try upcycling or, or, you know, mending it. And a good example as well is particularly, you know, with coats as well. If you've, there's a whole section on repairing coats and they're an expensive item normally and the sort of thing that you might get out season after season and jackets as well, particularly if you, you know, um, perhaps if you've got a, if you wear a suit to work every day. Or maybe you don't get it out very often, you get it out for special occasions and you find maybe, maybe you've not worn it for a year or two, you need the waistband expanding. These are lots of little tips here and tricks. Here's your coat section. Do you know the buttons always fall off my coat? It doesn't matter if I buy a cheap coat, an expensive coat. I always seem to end up with a button missing. And then I put them in my purse and I think I must put that back on. So I keep hold of the button and I... Don't always get round to it. 
Producer Hannah just asked me, do I try to pay for things in buttons? And I haven't quite tried that one yet, but I do have buttons in my purse, genuinely do keep hold of them, and I plan to, plan to put them back on. Something called to pay me in buttons. <laughs> I get given different shaped buttons depending on how the show went. So this is the Simple Tailoring and Alterations book. Um, a really great guide of just, as I told you, for all those different sections and for, for lots of different tailoring um, tips, really. T-A-M-Z 76. So our most popular fabrics so far this hour have been our poppies. So I'll look first of all at the black poppies. We must be very limited on this one now. So this is the black poppy fabric. Two metres left of this, so someone got a metre and a half, we've got two metres left. PSJQ35, I won't spend too long on that, as we have already shown it this morning, 355 per half metre. And then there's the white option for that. Again, with those big iconic poppy motifs there. Would look lovely actually on cushions perhaps um, for the garden or for a conservatory, you know, where you've got that sort of outside inside feel going on. DNJQ37. Or even placemats actually. I know we're sort of maybe coming out of um, time of year for, for outdoor placemats, maybe for eating in the garden with barbecues and things. Although we do sometimes get lucky with September. Um, but if you know, if, you want, if you've got a really bright, lots of flowers in your garden, they would be nice for that. Then the most popular, I'm just going to show you two of the linens that have been most popular. So it was the navy, was it the beige or the grey, Hannah? It was the beige. So I'll show you the navy first of all. You cannot fail to go wrong with this with a denim. Really lovely, just a nice way to sort of add in some different texture. But also for home furnishings if you want to use linens. Perhaps for storage caddies or for a little bag. If we look a little bit more closely, you might be able to see some more of that. This is a linen. This is 100% linen. So it does have a very different feel to those regular cottons, but you can just see there, you can catch that sheen. But really nice for a smart blazer. MNJQ19. And linen skirts as well are popular, aren't they, too, at this time of year, sort of with long boots and sort of thick, thick black tights or woolly tights. And then you've also got the beige, which has also been very popular, and another enzyme wash linen. So as I said earlier, that enzyme wash just giving it a softer, a slightly more natural feel. SMJQ47. 5.95 per half metre. Now, we've done something slightly different this morning. We've got a whole rail of different uh, garments that we've had made on the show and lots of your favourite patterns that we've had on. So I'm going to show you those and let's head over and have a look at all of these ones that we've got. So, here we go. Over to, we were playing around this morning. We were like, should we have the mannequin here? Should we have the rail there? But we've got all of these lovely items that we've had made on the show before. We've got the patterns for those and then we've also got some patterns that we don't have made up but that you've also liked previously too. So I'm going to start with the ones that we've got here, and I'll actually start with the one that we've got on our mannequin. So this, first of all, the first pattern is for this top. Now you get four different top options within this pattern. You've got um, four different sleeve variations. So you've got this lovely sort of uh, jewel neck at the top here. And then you've got different sleeve variations. So in this pattern, I'll just show you here the four different options. So you've got a trumpet sleeve there, sort of a big flowy sleeve. And then you've got a tulip sleeve. So the main body of the top stays the same and it's just a different uh, sleeve. Then you've got sort of a, a pleated one here, which is what we've got. And a bubble sleeve at the bottom there, so more of a sort of puff. Now this size is for sizes six to 14. We also have the exact same pattern. Um, in different size variations. So this is for size 14 to 22. So just depending which size you like, but obviously you've got those different, um, four different top options built into that. Actually, there are five top options. If I look at the back here, 
Let me see. Oh, so you've got two different top lengths here in that final option with the bubble sleeve. Now also, just, just to let you know, with this um, next section of the show, just for the rest of this hour, if there are any patterns that you particularly like and you've got a question about perhaps how much fabric you need for a certain size or which size comes in which pattern, just let us know. You can go onto the website um, or you can do it studio at sewingquarter.com. And if we can't answer it on the show, we, producer Hannah is going to be on that today. She will answer any questions about how much fabric you'll need via email. So that will happen over the next, she'll do that over the next couple of days if you do need to know perhaps how much fabric you want for a top or a skirt. Just send in the question and we will figure that out for you. So that's our first pattern, which incorporates this first top you can see here. Then our next one, we've got a skirt, which is the skirt you can see on the mannequin. I don't know how much you can see here. It's a really lovely, smart, sophisticated skirt. If I just turn it, I've got this lovely detail here, just sort of cinching it in at the waist. and the button detail and how this works, it sort of overlaps so it becomes very flattering because it lays nice and flat over this part of the tummy. Again as well with your questions if you want to know um, when any of these were made on the show so you can go back on YouTube and watch some of these being made. If you're not sure on those as well again you can do that via email and our producer will look through those, look through those emails and make sure you can go back and figure out which one it is. Now this pattern has three skirts in it, so they all incorporate that button detail that we've seen there on that um, sort of the waist section of the skirt. But there are three different length variations there. So you've got a sort of calf length one, then you've got just sitting uh, below the knee, and then you've got a shorter option there as well, just above the knee. So this is a smaller size option for the wrap skirt, 6 to 14. And then we've also got a larger option there, again, so this size, exactly the same again with your three skirt options, the three varying lengths with that wraparound feature and the buttons. But this is up to size 22, so 14 to 22. And I have to say the Vogue patterns are particularly great for dressmaking, they are very um, detailed patterns. So the fitted wrap skirt, it's got that button closing and the length variations, G-O-B-R 25. And that's actually been done in that beige linen that I just showed you that was really popular that was just on the table over there. So if you do like that in that particular fabric, there's the option to do that too. Now, moving on to our rail. So then we go on to, we've got a children's dress first of all. So I'll show you the actual dresses. Now, we've only got um, one size for this pattern. So let me double check the sizes for this. So 7 to 8, 10 to 12 and up to 14. So basically from age 7 up to age 14. This is one of the dress examples from that, so it's a slightly longer dress with a little button detail on the top. Great for the winter as well if you want to pair that with a little pair of tights. Obviously you can have a little cardigan or maybe a little bolero. And then we also made another dress from that bundle which is a, a smaller one there. And this has got two nice little buttonholes on the back, I'll show you the loop on the back you can see there oh you could make for Halloween an autumn an autumn dress you know those autumn fabrics we had this morning from Lewis and Irene if you missed them at eight we premiered some brand new gorgeous autumnal fabrics a little dress, even all the little mouse fabric or the one with the hedgehogs would be really lovely in these children's dresses. Now in this pattern, you can see here there are four different dresses built into this and different variations on sleeves and lengths. So you've got the one there with a wrap. You've got these longer ones we've made. You've got some of these ones with ties and then you've got different sleeve variations there too. As I said, for ages seven up to 14. So different children's and little girls' dresses with belts. And you've got a pullover dress with the uh, back neckline slit and then you've got the different hem band options you can see on the back there and that's it so we're going to pass those over so we're going to do a swap we're going to take you just see your hand our floor manager oh, who's also an amy her hand just slid in do you want to come in are you going to come and say hello no she's not she's shaking her head at me please don't make me do that she's just going to be a hand that takes a hanger so next up we've got a top option so this pattern again you've got four and um, four tops in here this is an example of a top made from this pattern 
So this one here has got two different uh, neck variations. So it's got a scoop neck and also a jewel um, neck there, so a slightly higher one. This has also got um, princess seams as well being worked into the top here with a zip on the back. So I'll show you the pattern for that, again in two different size options. Amy, Amy's there with her hand, look at that. <laughs> so this is the first one. These are the four different top variations and there's a sleeveless version and also a longer sleeve like we've just seen there. And again, using those two different scoop neck, so the scoop neck here and here. And then you've got the jewel neck here and here on the green one. And two size variations again. And I'll show you the back here. Sometimes I think those little figure diagrams show you slightly more clearly the different sizes. So this is 14 to 22. Sorry, the different shapes is what I meant to say. I think you can see those sometimes more easily with that little picture. SYBR68. And again, that's a Vogue pattern. And incorporating those princess seams, which again are really lovely for creating. You've got that nice feminine curve to those. It's a nice shape, so it creates almost like a, a bodice sort of shape to it. Almost has a, a slight sort of corset effect. I think it helps to slim, slim the waist down a bit. Then next up, we've got skirts. So we've got two skirts from this bundle, and this skirt is all about um, incorporating curves. So you can just see here as this works down with these different panel sections. Again, with a zip in the back. But this is all about giving you this nice sort of shape. So that's one from that pattern. And then we've also got, shall I swap you on, Amy? <laughs> also got another curvy one, which is just a straight all the way around rather than with a division in the central panel. Again, I can imagine that one with nice long boots and tights. That'd be nice. And I'll show you the different skirts. I'll pop that one on there. You can see here three different variations. So you've got the one with the division with that central panel and then the one that scoops all the way around. Nice with heels as well. Two size variations again, and those are your patterns on the back, you can see here with the different designs. And again, two size variations, six to 14 or 14 to 22. Next one is our top. Now this one we've got made up in the poppy fabric. So this is a slightly smaller poppy fabric actually. This is like a vintage top. This really reminds me of um, like swing dancing or so, you know that sort of style that you sometimes see in the top of a dress or a vintage like, afternoon tea sort of style. Got the puff sleeve there. And I'll swap this for the pattern. Let me show you the pattern. Thank you. So here you go, you can see here. So first of all, start with the size 12 to 20. So there are three different um, options built into this. So that's the one here you can see. Now also we have got another blouse made up in this from this pattern too, in a different colorway. And you've got that shape at the back as well. Thank you. So you can just see those different shapes and at the back as well with the blouse. This one here's sort of got a tie bow effect coming across into that central section. MFBR02. And so you've also got that in a size four to 12. Now this is a skirt pattern. Now this one here, I have to say, is per this is a really lovely for winter skirt. So again, if you wanted to, um, these are, will be lovely for work. If you wanted to wear something nice and smart, you could wear them with different blouses or with shirts or um, sort of smock tops. And the lovely thing about this pattern is there are six different skirts built into this. Utilizing all different types of uh, sort of flares and different shapes, some more tightly fitting than others. And we've got some skirt examples, so I'll show you some of those. Which, so from this one, we've got... I wanted to wear this one today, but it didn't quite fit. It's a bit too big. But you've got the... Um, that's sort of more of a straight option, like a pencil skirt. And then you've also got 
this skirt, which has been, was really popular when this one was on. Oh. <laughs> How did I manage that? This is why Amy's here with me. Look, she's there ready. That's why, because I can't even hang up. Hang up. What's wrong with me this morning? But you've also got a more flary option, so you can just see here. And this is in the cord as well. It's got a nice sort of flow to it and swing. I don't know if you can really see the shape of that. I want you to see if we look a little bit more closely. You can just see this sort of shape in here. So this is option B from the pattern, but as I said, there are six skirt options built into this. I'm about to prove that I can hang something on a rail. What's wrong with me? So there are six different skirts in this pattern, just looking at those ones there. And you can see it's all about different variations of length and different variations of sort of flare out at the bottom of the skirt. Next one is another skirt one. So again, you've got six, uh, six skirt options with this. This is incorporating a belt into this one. Do we have a skirt from this one? Oh, yes, we do. So this is a skirt made from this pattern. That's a pretty one, isn't it? Nice sort of feminine shape. And the actual options on the pattern, you can see the different length variations again, and just incorporating a different level, you know, different variations on the dart at the top. You've also got one with princess seams. You've got one with a self belt. You've got one with a back princess seam. You've got one with darts, and then you've also got different lengths, so a mid knee, and then you've got also a straighter skirt there too, with different uh, back zip zip closures on them. Two skirt variations. Now, then we also had, if you were here on Monday with us, Paul Clark was here. He's from the Great British Sewing Bee. And, and we're very limited on stock on this because he made it on Monday. And he also made a mini version yesterday for children, which was lovely. Um, but this is a bowling shirt. So we've got this pattern back in again today if you did um, miss it. And Paul has got so many shirts from that he uses this pattern. And every shirt he's worn on the show so far has been made from this pattern. So you can just see here. This is an example of the shirt. If you want to go back on Monday, you can watch the step-by-step -step instructions. We talked through um, the collar specifically, how to insert that. Also looking at the pocket and the sleeves and some different techniques for the hems as well. But it's a nice detail on the collar there. You can just see. But you get all of your sizes in one with the men's shirt, so small to XXL. And there are three variations as well. Thank you. Um, with the panel, if you want to insert it. So you can take that to one side or in the central bit too. EFBR12, 8.95 for the bowling shirt. And again, as I said, so if you want to watch that one on Monday, what date was Monday? I've got, I'm testing myself now. Was it the second, no, the, the fourth? The fourth. So you can go back on YouTube and watch the fourth. How are we on the, how are we on the what now? The 8th or 9th of September? How, I don't understand how that's happened. It's just ridiculous. So we've covered all the ones on our rail, but we've also got some other patterns this morning um, that we've never made before. So these are just some different pattern options to bring to you today if you're into your dressmaking. So I've got a top option here, again, in two size variations. This one is with, um, you've got some different sort of longer sleeves, so maybe nicer for winter. Lovely for some more lightweight fabrics, perhaps um, even for a silk or a chiffon. So you've got sizes 4 to 14, the different patterns there on the back. And also in the other sizes here too. Let's just look at those different shapes for you. This one goes up to size 26, 16 to 26. Again, as I said earlier, if you have got any specific questions about how much fabric you need for certain sizes of certain patterns, you can email those to us, studio at sewingquarter.com, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So that's the inverted notch, so incorporating those, that sort of double notch in the neckline of the top. Then we're on to wrap dresses. So again, with that lovely sort of, I wear lots of dresses actually with ties on. I think it helps to just sort of pull you in um, a little bit rather than it being, although I was saying that I'm wearing a dress that actually isn't like that today. It's just like a big tent. Um, but you know, you, if you want to pull it in with a belt, then you've got the option to do that. Let's 
four variations in this one. These are like shirt dresses actually. Again, would be lovely um, perhaps to wear to a, a winter wedding or to work if you wanted to, um, it, depending always with the fabric you use is obviously gonna really change the style of the dress. I love option A. I really like that sleeveless option there with the um, collar. Actually, that's the same collar as the bowling shirt that we did with Paul, so that technique that we've learned this week. Two size variations for that again. We've got another, so just depending which size you wanted to order. So these dresses have got um, the collars, they've also got that semi-fitted bodice, so sort of pulling you in, and then different options with the pleats. So lots of lots of pattern options this morning. Um, I hope I've not bombarded you there with those, but skirts, tops, dresses, um, the bowling shirts, also the children's ones too. Um, I'm just going to go back over and recap these fabrics that you could use for some of these projects. So which is our most popular fabric at the moment? So it's half a metre left of the poppies on black, so I'll take that one off the table. But the um, poppies on white, we have still got some stock of this. Really popular fabric this morning, being sold by the half metre. How many metres of this? Over 30 metres of this have been checked out this morning. So this is being sold, as I said, off the bolt. You can in half metre increments. So, And also the lovely thing about that is our um, cut to measure fabrics arrive in a sewing quarter box like this one. So this will arrive to you like a little present from us to you, all wrapped up in our tissue paper there with a sticker. Now also as well, if, you, if it's the first time you've ever ordered anything from Sewing Quarter, if you're only just tuning in today, um, and, or it's the first time you buy something, if you spend over £10 on your first order, you also get a free Sewing Quarter sewing kit. So this has got lots of little bits you can take on the go with you. Threads and scissors and tape measures and a seam unripper. So great to take to classes or to just pop in your, in your sewing bag. That's worth 14 95 so lots of people with this one in their basket, so it's not a guaranteed order until you check it out. So just make sure if you do want the poppies on white, um, DNJQ37 is the item number for that one. Now the linens, do we want to look, which particular colours do we want to look at? Navy's way out in the lead, so we'll start with that. I wore a blazer on Monday's show made out of this fabric um, that Jennifer Mills made, or Tuesday, no Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Um, so again, here you've got that cross-hatching detail with that. And this is a linen, so it isn't, um, this isn't one of the cottons that we have that look like a linen look. This is actually linen. MNJQ19, 5.95 per half metre. And then we've also got a grey. Oh, it's nice silvery grey. Again, a really popular one. I think with linens, maybe the neutrals, I think the neutrals lend themselves more to, so the navy, the grey and the beige to dressmaking. And perhaps those brighter blues and, um, it's called pink, but I think it's a mauve, the purple, I think those lend themselves maybe more to soft furnishings or cushions. That's your grey. Then you've also got your beige, so I'll finish the ones... Those ones first. This is the one that's called pink. I think it's dusty purple. But I don't maybe, maybe that, I don't think that's my eyes. I don't think I'm going crazy. I do think that's more of a purple. ZP JQ57. 5.95 per half meter. Then we've also got the beige. This has a very, nat not only the natural feel, but I think that natural colour um, to it as well. Very sort of nice neutrals. SMJQ47. Then we also had two blue options. So we've got the duck egg blue. And then you've also got a turquoise, which I'll show you in just a moment. But you can see, actually, when you open it out a little bit more, 
with the light behind it, you can see a little bit more of the texture in that linen. And that's half a metre as well. So if you buy one unit, you get a half a metre cut like that. Um, if you obviously want to, to go up, if you wanted two metres, that would be four units. If you wanted three metres, that would be six units. Then you've got your turquoise as well. I think that's quite a cheerful colour. Now, just had a request as well in the tailoring book. Was it to look at trousers? Let's have a look at the trousers section. Was that Judith, did you say? Let's see. Was this from Judith, Produce Hannah? Morning, Judith. Let's have a look what we've got in here for trousers. Here we go. And over a third of that navy linen stock, and we had loads of that this morning, has been checked out. So if you do want that, just, just, as, um, just to be aware, that's been a popular one this morning. So the trouser section for Judith, let's have a look at the alterations in here. So looking at um, lengthening trousers, so looking at the hemline there. Shortening trousers. You've got shortening trousers with turn-up, so you might use that maybe more for jeans. You've also got widening trouser legs, narrowing the trouser leg. You've got narrowing um, at the hips of the trousers and expanding at the waist of the, um, and the seat of the men's trousers. So lots of different variations for uh, trouser alterations in there and narrowing the hips as well too. So that's your trouser chapter in the book. T-A-M-Z-76. This whole book just focusing on different, um, on different chapters, different items of clothing in the wardrobe and different alterations you might want to make to those. Just quickly, the navy linen is across the bottom of your screens there. This one's been really popular this morning, so if you do like your navy, if you do want to team that, I would, use, I would definitely wear this with a pair of jeans. I'd have a nice jacket or a blouse made out of this, your navy. M-N-J-Q-19. 5.95 and just quickly the poppies on white over half the stock of this one has gone so if you do like that one you can check that out on the website that will be on the shopping list of everything from today's show so thank you for joining me in our wardrobe essentials hour looking at those different fabrics and patterns i'm joined again by joe in the next hour we've covered budgies the next hour we've got the tilda sneaky fox so don't go anywhere i know you're going to love it <laughs> follow us on twitter for more inspiration top tips news and share your own creations with us. So today we're going to be learning the prick stitch. Now, the prick stitch is very similar to a back stitch and they're basically very tiny stitches which are visible on the front of the fabric uh, and very long stitches on the back. So first of all, you need to start with the needle at the wrong side of the fabric coming through to the front. And like I said, it's very similar to the back stitch where you're gonna go backwards rather than forwards. And you wanna make this stitch as tiny as possible. So taking a couple of um, th strands from the fabric itself. And then the length of your prick stitch could be entirely up to you. So I'm gonna make it quite a large one so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going through the fabric and then I'm gonna come back again, taking a couple of strands from the fabric to come down. You wanna keep these as even as possible as you're going across the line. So there we have our prick stitch. This Monday, Jane Alcock joins us for two shows aimed at helping us improve our quilting technique. Jane will launch this quilting quest by bringing the seaside to the studio. Using some gorgeous fabrics in a marine colour palette, she'll create an origami boat quilt block. She'll go on to make a striking rainbow pyramid quilt as featured in Emma Jean Janssen's Buy the Bundle book. These stunning blocks with their bold colours and clean lines incorporate contemporary designs with traditional techniques. And with Jane's expert guidance, making them at home will be easier than you think. So tune in on Monday the 11th of September at 8am and 10am and quilt along with Jane, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Join us on Wednesday the 13th of September for a colourful hexy happy hour with guest Victoria Pete. 
English paper piecing dab hand Victoria lets no piece of fabric go to waste. With her steady hand and her keen eye for colour, she turns her offcuts into gorgeous EPP creations. Well, now we've armed Victoria with a stack of hexes and some of our finest fabrics, including prints from the popular Botanica range, as well as some gems from Tilda's Harvest Collection. Alongside host Natasha McCarty, she'll bring you an EPP demonstration that's bound to give you the piecing bug. So tune in at 9am on Wednesday the 13th of September for an hour of hexy fun with Victoria Peet. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. morning welcome back to our last hour here at sewing quarter today and it's tilda town now i tell you what i absolutely love this collection of fabrics from tilda i've never had them on the show before they only launched i think last week um and this is from their harvest collection and they're absolutely beautiful brand new fabrics um and i well, i love them this this is right up my street these are fabrics that i would definitely choose so we've got fabrics, the most popular ones so far from Tilda and um, from this collection that we're selling by the half metre this morning. So if you do want these off the bolt, these are in half metre increments. So as with that last hour, you can have as much or as little as you like. So we'll start first of all with this pink one. These almost look a little bit like um, Christmas baubles. So this one is it's the flower tree. It says in purple. I'm having debates with my pinks and purples this morning. This looks pink to me. But this is from the Harvest range from Tilda. Really lovely, classic, whimsical patterns with lovely little florals and paisleys as well in their collections. SWGQ25, that's our first one. Now this collection is actually quite hard to get hold of, um, particularly by the half metre and, and to have such a selection as well. So. We're lucky to have this on today. Then we've got it, the same uh, fabric in a different colourway. So these really do look like bright Christmas baubles to me. Um, or you've got that dark teal, uh, sort of dark navy blue, sorry, background. And then you've got the aqua. This was the most popular when the uh, fabric was launched last week. Really gorgeous patterns and florals and designs built in there. And very intricate as well. Can we look a little bit more closely at that, um, that sort of floral pattern in the middle there? I think we can. Yeah, there we go. But just that attention to detail. And lovely as well with all of those different sort of accents picked out. Then next up is the birds. Now I'm being told, as I wasn't here last week, but I'm being told you went crazy for the birds last week. So this is the only one we can show you today by the half meter. This is the uh, birds on blue, but you've got those olive greens that are very, I think that's sort of synonymous with Tilda really. And that pink as well, that powder pink. Bird tree blue fabric, and again from the Harvest range, and again being sold by the half metre, $7.95. ELGQ30. These are all 100% cotton. If you bought this last week, I wonder if anyone's been quick enough to make anything yet in this fabric, as it's only Tilda only it's only just launched. It's their sort of autumn collection. If you did, send us a picture. Oh, these are I love them. I love this collection. These are just gorgeous. This is the cabbage flower. I love this. It comes in a pink as well. I've got my my eyes keep looking over there at it. It's lovely. So again, you've got those blues, you've got your teals, you've also got the magenta pink coming through there in the um, sort of the focal point of the flower. UHGQ74. And then 
Oh, this is my favourite. This is lovely. I love that you sort of get almost like a scalloped effect coming through in that curve. If you can just see there when we look at it more closely, it just sort of goes over almost like shells. Now, we have got some other fabrics from Tilda, the Harvest range, on the website. These are the only ones we've got on the show today by the Half Meter. These are our favourites and your favourites as well, actually, the most popular ones. But if you do want to go onto the website, you can type in the search bar. Um, if you can type in the um, look, at, look at Tilda and then you can look at those. And if you do want to buy any of the other ones, buy the Half Meter. That's my favourite. I need to do a project with that. I need to wear that fabric. Then we've also got eight floral on a pink. This is more of a, um, a small floral here, like a little daisy. So you've got a dark pink background and then some picking out some uh, sort of a spearmint green in the middle of this. This is the Bessie purple fabric, again from the Harvest range. I can imagine some of our Tilda toys in a little dress or dungarees made out of that one. Or actually, actually, producer Hannah's saying that as a binding on a quilt might be nice because it's quite a small print. And then we've got one final one in aqua. This is pretty too. They, and they, I can just see how these work really well together. This is just a snippet of the collection. There are others on the website, as I said before. Um, these are the most popular ones at the moment and the ones we've got on today. Can we look at... There we go. RTGQ31. This is the flower bush teal fabric. We're just going to show you the website, how you can do that if you do want to search for those other fabrics. So if you go to sewingquarter.com and at the top there, you'll just see the search bar. And if you type in the word harvest, as this, that's what this collection is called, you'll see all of the harvest collection there from Tilda. And all of those can be bought by the half metre, 7 95 And some options there as well for fat quarters and for fat eights. Talking about fat eights, we do have a fat eighth bundle in this hour. So this, I believe this is, is this a 20 piece fat eighth bundle? I can add them up or we, yes it is. And um, so this, this is how it will um, arrive at this and you get a little piece of all these different fabrics from the collection. So with the lovely thing with the fat eights is that you get a little piece from all of these different colours. This is the only way you get a taste of all these different colours. Whereas the fat, the, in the fat eights, that is, sorry, in the fat quarters, they're arranged in colour families. So with this one, with the smaller size of the fat eighth, you get a bit of everything. You get that whole rainbow of colour. And I'll just show you some of these pieces. Just a couple. We are going over to Joe in just a second. I'll just lay a couple of these out so you can see. But you've got pinks, you've got oranges. Lovely to sort of mix and match them. Can we look at those ones? These are just some of those fabrics there. I'll just lay these here so you can see some of them. I like that one. That's beautiful. You've got nice sort of khaki greens and you've got the different, you've got some, um, some of the bird fabrics and you've also got some of the cabbage flowers. Let me just hold that up there. Again, some more of those smaller florals. I love, love, love that one. That is my favourite. But the fat eights um, are 50 centimetres by 27 centimetres. And I will just quickly show you one in case you're not sure what sort of size that is and what that might be useful for. So it's half of a fat quarter. You can just see there. Lovely as well if you want to take small sections of these, lovely for quilting. UHGQ89 is the um, item number for your fat eights. 20 different pieces, all different colours, so you've got a bit from all of the different families of the collection from that Harvest one, plus all of our um, off-the-bolt Harvest fabrics as well this morning from Tilda. Now, Tilda Town, this hour, you might have seen this before, but you've not seen it being made, so we've got Joe Carter in this morning to show us how to make our Tilda Fox, or Fox in a Box, as we're fondly calling it. So you can make one fox from this 
kit and you've got everything in here that you need to make it. So you've got your fabrics, you've got your embroidery thread, you've got your sewing needle, you've got your instructions and you've also got a wooden stick for getting right down into those limbs. You just need to add the wadding. This is everything here. This has just launched the fox because it's using the Harvest Collection fabric. So you can just see there what's included. Come on then, Jo, do you want to show us how it's done? She's patiently waiting here for me for like the last, how long has that been? Like 10 minutes? So let's, there's our fox. <laughs> that still tickles me. They, managed, they spent quite a long time this morning trying to get the fox to balance like that. That is excellent. So we have to do this side by side, really like that on the desk. That's what you have to do if you're a fox, apparently. So we're <laughs> making the fox this morning and you, you not only obviously designing your own toys like the budgie, but you quite often do the Tilda ones, don't you? I do. I really like the way Tilda toys are made, actually. And they're slightly different as well, aren't they, in terms of how they make them compared to how sometimes you do it, different techniques. There are, there's very much a Tilda technique, I think, and a way of doing things. And it's not, I quite like to sort of see how other patterns are made and put together and uh, doing something different. And once you've done a Tilda toy as well, like you say, they do follow... They do. Uh, you know, you, you, a Tilda toy is iconic. You know exactly, yes. you know, you know that this is... And this, these aren't just for children. These are very much toys that you could have, um, you know, as part of your decor or around yes. the house or sat on the bed or, or on the bookshelf. This is the fox this morning. I was standing right up. He's quite tall. So it's using all of those fabrics from the Harvest range. You can just see here. How lovely is that collection? I love. I, lo I think I was trying to decide on my favourite. I, th I really like the Bessie, the little this, the little flower. floral, this one. I like this is my favourite. That's actually the main body of the fox. But you can see that those long legs and the tail. So in the kit, you get everything you need to make one fox. Um, obviously you've got these long, you've got the long limbs, and you've got he's got his little head there as well. It's quite a big, quite a big face. And so, how do we get started with this one then, Joe? Well, first of all, cut out all the pattern pieces. So in the kit, you've got your, that's everything you get in the kit there on your screens. You've got your instructions and fabric. So this is the, um, the pattern pieces that you've got here. So I've, I've cut these out and they don't have the seam allowance included. Ah, oh, okay. But I cut them out without, you know, as marked. So they don't have the seam allowance. So when I've cut them out, I've added my sort of preferred seam allowance. I've gone for the quarter inch. All the way around. All the way around there. Okay. Um, you have a sheet of written instructions and then the um, visual ones as well to, so you can refer between the two and actually they're really straightforward and nice to follow. So you could take from here, so say this, this whole method here that talks you through head, arms, legs, body and then you've got figure references that you use these, you can yes. then go and look at the, at the visual picture if you want to. I don't know if you can see that there. Okay. Because often you'll read something i think yeah i think i know what that means but it's nice to have the sort of confirmation with a Definitely, picture to see what it actually is so you cut out the pattern pieces then you add your quarter of an inch seam allowance um obviously yeah, there's enough the fabric there's enough fabric there for you to do that that all comes in the box there is and there's different ways of tackling different parts of the fox step one for the head put the two fabrics for the back head and the top part of the head, because they're different, sort of, they're like the patchwork fabric, the different, um, there it is. I was just gonna try and get the fabric out of here so you could see what, yeah. And does it tell you which fabric to use for which section? Yes, there's a sort of a key up here, so you've got the picture of the fabric and then it's labeled fabric one, fabric two. Ah, oh, so you know exactly where to put it. You know exactly it, where everything's one. going, yep. And these are the fabrics that you've got in here, um, sort of in the kit. Okay. Okay, so for the face, you want to fold the fabric in half, right sides together, and draw around. I always use water erasable pen. Always, always. Um, <laughs> this is the one I said, isn't it? Like, it's just in your handbag. Like, everyone else has a biro. Right? Jo has a water erasable pen. She's the mum at the school gate. Like, I'll mark that out for you with a, with a special pen. As long as it's not raining. No. <laughs> <laughs> or that you're not busy making 100,000 mice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so draw around, right sides together. So on one side, draw around that and cut out the piece with the seam allowance added. And for the head front and the head back, these are made from two different fabrics. 
I've cut them out already, but I'll show. Fold the place the fabrics right sides together. So this one is fabric five and this one is fabric six. Place them right sides together and then draw around each of those. And then because they're right sides together, you then have mirror image pieces in the to different create fabrics. That base. But it tells you exactly how to do that. So we've got so you just cut those out with little embroidery scissors? Did you just switch them the around? Just fabric, regular scissors? Fabric shears, okay. yep. And the fabric holds together nicely, so on a nice flat surface. That's the one I can just cut it out. I didn't even pin these together. They held together really nicely. Okie doke. So there we go. There's the back head ready to go. And I've already joined one head front and face piece. So this part here. It's a really big head, isn't it, on our it fox? Is. It's, there he is. The actual height of the fox I did, um, is 61 centimetres, so he's really tall. But he's got that, he has got a really big, he's got a big face. That's it. And on the, on the template, there are markers here. Yep. And on this one, show, that show how it fits together. Let's turn this around. So you know, as you're doing the seam, if you transfer these marks onto each of these pieces, you can see that they're lining up as you sew the seam and you know it's going to fit and it's on track. Oh, that's great. So you've got a guide to follow that's going to mean that you're not veering off. Yes, yeah, so you're not going to end up with too much sort of face at the end of the nose or... Just noticed that in there. Pin. There's a little pin been popped in. Somebody has <laughs> been nice. messing around with the book. <laughs> It's probably not ideal for a toy. I don't know. No. It generally um we all don't use pins, pins, do you for toys no. really? So what you can do with these markers, I'll just use these clips. Just clip little notches that line up with them. And then it makes it easier for transferring the marks onto the piece. Again, does it take you through um Obviously, there's enough fabric in here to make one. Would you photocopy the templates and then, if you obviously wanted to make it again, it depends. You could. I, because I do a lot of templates, I have a, a template storage system. So oh, I would just cut them out. Tell me more. <laughs> it's very sophisticated. <laughs> And they're all in brown envelopes, labelled up, but then stuffed down the side of some drawers. But they are, they are labelled. That's more than they more are than most might have done. But yes, it, if you wanted to keep the, pat the box all together so you could make another one if you had fabrics later on and you wanted to make, make it from something else, photocopy the pieces then and then you've got the option just in case go any go missing. Because it's, that, that's the problem. You've got all the pattern templates apart from one. That's when you run into trouble. Right, so I'll position that on there. I'm just going to transfer these marks onto the seam allowance. So as you were saying, that's just so you can match up the main body of the head or the ear sort of section with the face and just make sure that they're going to lock in. Just to keep it on track, that's right. And I'm going to pop pins in as well, just for ease as I'm sewing it. Tilda toy is really, really popular, particularly these ones that come in kits. Um, so the only thing you have to add to this is your wadding or your stuffing. Uh, stuffing, actually, you would use this, wouldn't you? But the... Um, that's all you have to add. Everything else is in there, so you get all of your instructions. You've got those figure photos that label exactly where each fabric has to sit. You've obviously got all of the fabric as well from that Harvest collection from Tilda. All of these ones here. And then you also get, um, in here, you've got a wooden stick, so you can poke right down into the limbs. And you get your thread, and you also get um, a skein of embroidery thread for the eyes and things as well, don't you? So everything you need. I love that photo. That still makes me smile. It's just so casual. He is, isn't he? Just lounging around, catching a tan. I have to say, though, don't you have you found this that foxes have become much more? Um, well, they used to just they would disappear, like if you saw one. Whereas now, sometimes if they're in the garden, they won't go away. They're very confident. <laughs> they just sort of walk across the garden. I think, what are you doing? They've become. What's the word I'm looking for? They've just become much more. Um, I, I can't confident. Think... That's yeah. the, like just not so not so scared of humans. Really, they've become more. You used to live in like, residential and built up areas and you just see them a lot more. They're just so noisy as well. Yeah, they are, aren't they? <sighs> so, so noisy. But not this little fox today, Altilda Harvest Fox. He's fairly quiet, he's fairly well behaved. 
T uh, WRGQ39 is the um, item number for our fox this morning. And this is the kit, so we think this should be called Fox in a Box because you get everything you need in there to make it. Or the boxy foxy. And that on the back there just shows you everything that you get in there. Right, I've pinned this quite heavily. Experiment to see which side you feel more comfortable, whether it's face side up or head side up. I like to sew. I find it more comfortable sewing this side up, but not, ev not everybody does. So. Okay. so you could pin it and think, oh, actually, no, that's not so comfortable. I'll swap it round and do it the other way. Turn it over. I'll take that one out for a start. But this is probably the trickiest seam. Just shaping the fabric around this curve is probably the trickiest part of it, and it's not too tricky. I was just going to say, is that why you use so many pins? Because obviously it's quite a sharp curve there. And you don't usually use pins in no, your I'm toys, not a big uh, children's pin toys, do you? Because I'm, I'm quite clumsy and I catch myself on them as well. So just rather sort of base it into place or not, or not yes. use pins at all. Yeah. Right, so I need to find the, pe the pedal. We lost it. Our pedal under the desk. It's all the way under here. We're doing, oh, no, Joe's doing like lunges <laughs> under the table. I can't, I couldn't, I knew I couldn't, it was too far under for me to do that discreetly. <laughs> <laughs> just slide it into place. And actually, if you transfer the outline of the template, you have a line to follow as well, which I didn't do with this one. Because, but the other side, because it had the outline on, I could because follow that line. Because you've added the seam allowance after, you can use that line as a guide. You can. But just take it nice and slowly. And I might take these pins out because I'm a bit more comfortable sewing without them. But let's see how far I get. As you said, for you, you like having the face up, but yes. you know, you might prefer. This is the fox and um, the head that we're doing at the moment, you can just see here. So we're just inserting this sort of, um, the front part of the face in here to create that sort of iconic sneaky fox shape. But I love the, the design of Tilda Toys are really, so they look quite simple, but then all the detail is in the fabric. It's, I think they really show off the they Tilda fabric really their nicely. Really well. And they, as I said right at the top of the show, I just think with Tilda, it is iconic. You would spot, you would know. You, if I went into someone's house and I saw, I would know it was a Tilda toy yes. rather than a toy because you just know the, you know, you come to know the fabrics, but also the designs of the actual animals themselves. They sort of, they almost fit as a family, even though they're they different. Do. They're different creatures or different animals. They, they just work. And actually, as an example of that, we've also got the Tilda monkey today. Um, we are always having to reorder this monkey because he comes into this, we have to get this one back in stock all the time. Um, and this is the monkey here. You can see what I mean when you see them side by side, actually. How you can, you can tell they're Tilda. But the monkey as well is much like the box, uh, the fox in a box, but this comes in a bag. So you can actually get enough to make two monkeys in the bag, which is this one. Here it is, monkey friends. So you've got enough material, as I said, um, in two different colorways to make your monkeys. In those two different fabrics there and there. Again, you get all of your instructions, you get your wadding, your thread. You actually get the wadding in this one as well, so that's all in the bag. You've got the fabric for the face, the different that different face section. So if you've missed this before, if it's sold out when you've previously watched a show with this on and you do want our monkey, we usually have him swinging off the shelf. But there's enough to make Two, two little monkey friends. And that's from Part of My Garden. That's the Tilda collection. So the fox is from uh, the Harvest range and the monkey is from Part of My Garden. But they do work really well together. That monkey, I can't, can I get him to sit up? I mean, he's just lounge. He's just, he's like vertical. The fox is confident and the monkey's just relaxed. Yeah, see, the fox yeah. has got it going on and then the monkey's just <laughs> chilled. There he is. Here's our fox. I'll keep our fox sat up with me. So that was all okay. It wasn't too painful, the face. It wasn't, that went in quite nicely, and I would give it a press at this point. I've pressed this one, seeing it looks, it's got a much crisper fold. Okay. So it's worth giving it a press, but I'll, I'll crack on. Yeah. Um, and now, these two, and you can see, once you've got those, you need to put them together like this, and sew along the front to join them. And I have the outline 
which is quite handy to follow, to follow now, it. as I say. So again, this is all in your um, photo instructions here, you can see. So we've, we had, Joe just did this part of step two with the two sides of the faces. It's nice that they're colour as well, so you can reference which fabrics are which. It really helps. And then this one here, right sides together. But this is the, it does really help to know which, obviously not only which one goes where, but you can sort of know which piece to even pick up, really, once you start to assemble. Yes. They are the really good, those instructions. Because I think a lot of people are sort of visual learners or workers and particularly I, sewists or yes. you, you know or yeah. people that creative, are creative yeah. people as well what's lovely about the tilda ones um obviously this is a patch fox so using all, all the different fabrics is that in the um quite often if you're only using you only use a couple of different fabrics with an animal don't you because it would be too expensive to put in half meter cuts of all of those fabrics yes. whereas with this because it's you know Tilda are actually making this and you're get, you're getting so many different fabrics from the collection you know you've got different fabrics here on the back of the head on the back of the body on the legs on the tail and you're only able to get that because they bundle it in that way So we're right sides together with the face. OK, there's quite a tight corner there, so I've just clipped into the seam allowance slightly. There we go, and I'll turn this out the right way, and you start to see. That's why there was a sharp. <laughs> it's, yes. But there's the foxy face. So now the back of the head. I need the pattern template. It shows the back of the head is going to be joined along the centre back. Okay. First. But then it shows on the pattern, this dashed line here needs to be left open. So I've just put little markers on there so I know where to, st where to stop. So you're going to sew all the way around the edge and leave that? No, I'm going to sew from here to here and then from there to there to join oh, okay, that yes. together. Yeah. And then I'll sew all the way around together. the edge. I'm with you, sorry. And that's the head, pretty much. Pretty much there. Pretty much there when I've joined them together. Um, we've had a question in from um, Poppy Lynn. She was wondering, what is the best way to attach the limbs on the monkey? If perhaps you've already got the monkey Poppy Lynn, I'm guessing, maybe. Um, or if you get a chance to, if you... I, from memory, I think the limbs are stitched on. You can stab stitch them on, so you go straight through, or I like to... Yeah. I'm trying to remember now. I, in fact, I have some monkey limbs here <laughs> and a body to... Um... But yes, just... And if you sew them together with quite a small area, then they, you've got the flexibility and movement. Swing, you if you sew sort of... them in quite a, a long, you know, sort of join, there's not as much flexibility. So you want to go but these right are just tight there, really? To, yes, these yeah. are just hand-stitched straight to it. Almost like you would a button that amount of area, if that makes sense. Okay, so keeping it quite small, really, where you attach it, yes. which just means you still get that, you get that swingy sort of feel. And would that be the same for the fox? The, the fox limbs are different, actually. These are sewn, the arms are sewn directly into the seam. Oh, yes, you can see there that they, those are straight along, sort of fit all the way in. So whereas the monkey... Hang on, I will get them. The monkey limbs are all made, this is from the other fabric, are all made separately. I think that's the tail, actually. Is it? Yeah. No, yeah. that's the tail. That's the leg. So you make them all separately and then hand-stitch them on. Ah, oh, OK. So you just make those limbs. They're not attached into the body. They're put on afterwards. Yes, and I just use maybe sort of a quarter inch, just join them. Make sure they're well joined on lots of stitches through, holding them in place you don't want them to get pulled off okay um but yes so a bit of flexibility but also well held well on in the space so they're not going to fall off or get tugged off by a child perhaps if, yeah. if it's being swung around in a little nursery or a bedroom i hope that helps poppy i'll pop those on there okay back to our fox just sew this together on the bottom So there's a dashed line in the middle on this uh, part of the pattern template, just stitching either side of this and leaving a gap in the middle. There we go. So 
So there's just that space in the back to stuff, to turn and stuff in a minute. Okay. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. I was just going to show. There it is. So that's just the back. Okie doke. And then line up your seams. And I would start at this top point and then stitch the front and back head together all the way around. So I'll do that quite quickly now. And then all of a sudden you start to, you, you've got the shape of that fox head, haven't you? I feel like I've got a baby this morning because the head is so big. If you leave it, it sort of has you a bit more of a mind of its head. own. I feel like I need to be doing full on, like holding this like a baby with our fox this morning. There he is. Da, 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 da. Quite a long baby. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone turns the TV on now, they'll be like, what is going on? <laughs> so that one there and the monkey there, like twins. <laughs> Does this make me mum to the fox? I think, do you think it now sort of recognises you? Yeah, it probably does, yeah. Probably waiting to be fed. Then, um, obviously, we're now onto this section here where we're doing the back, the back part of the head. Then do we move on to the limbs? Is this like how you would do it, with getting everything ready or the body? This is, yes, it's, it's getting each sort of component part ready. The next bit, I think, is the arms and the legs. And before they're cut out, yes. they're, these are done in the Tilda technique. Um, so you draw, on the, draw around the template onto the fabric and then follow that line and then cut them out later. So you're adding the sewing, the seam allowance after you've already stitched the seam, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, and then you turn them through. So you cut basically the seam allowance rather than stitching, you stitch around the actual line. Yes, you're not yeah. stitching following the seam allowance. Actually, I best move the nose out of the way, otherwise it's not going to look right. But, and also, before you stitch the arms and legs, the fabric is joined, and before they're the templates are drawn out. You stitch the fabrics together, ready. I'm not explaining this well, am I? I tell you what. No, no, it's fine. I, I, it's my fault as well for rushing ahead before we finish that. Well, I, sometimes I sort of trip over my words. So the fabric, these are for the arms and the legs because you have different, they sort of have different pores. Oh yeah, I can show that there. So down to there and then you've got that sort of separate section and the same on the legs. So each arm, each limb is made with four different fabrics. So there's quite a lot to put together from a patchwork point of view. There is, but it's quite quick. There's a, a, a fast and easy technique. So with that round there. But again, all of your instructions for this are in the kit. You've got all of the photography, you've got all of the fabric, you've got all of your thread. Um, you just need to add your stuffing for the fox this morning. And 19.95. We haven't got a name for the fox yet. I'm terrible with names. No. So and you've also got the monkey there as well, if you do like that one. That's the monkey in a bag, which always we have to, we're always reordering our monkey. And you get two monkeys in the kit for that uh, from Tilda. And that's from the Part of My Garden collection. So in stitching, the only tip for the front and the back of the head, make sure this nose is it's up not, and out of the way. It's just not going to get caught in a seam. No. So that's the head. You can turn it out the right way. I wonder who's, how many people have done that with the nose sort of squidged over. I mean, it's only, you only really have to pick a few stitches to free it. But uh, it's always frustrating when you do something like that. So there we go, that, that's the idea. I'll pop the nose through the right way. I can do that if you want, if you want to carry on. But I don't think I'm going to get to stuffing this, but that's the head. You would stuff that as a complete I'll do that while piece. you carry on. Should we do that? Do you want to we'll do, do a double that? act. I can start stuffing the head. I can't hold my baby anymore. I was quite quick to put that down, wasn't I? <laughs> do okay. Know. I don't know what I've done with the stick. Should I just use this? Yeah, no, it's not the one, but... Oh. Okay. 
There we go. So there are instructions on how to piece these together because this, the, the arms and the legs, let's make sure I've got the right pieces. From fabric two, you cut a strip and it tells you what size to cut it. And it's basically the width of the fabric that you're given. I think it's four and a half inches. And you need to join that to fabric. I think two and four go together. It says instructions and three and five. I think this is five, this is three. Okay. And then once you've joined these together, put them right sides together and line up the seam joining. Let me move it this way. Are you going to get all of your arms and legs out of these two pieces that you, so you only have to stitch it once? Yes. Ah, I see. This is clever. So, I'm just going to line those up and pop a pin in it. Do the same on the other side. Make sure actually they're nice and smooth. We just had a question in from Marjorie. She said, could you add a stick inside the neck to stop the head wobbling? You could. But then I wouldn't give it to a child if there was a stick inside okay, the head. So if you're using it for more of a so sort of decorative purposes. Yes, if it's sort of ornamental, then that's fine. But you do Is there anything else you could do then if you wanted to make sure that that head really sort of stayed up a little bit more? Um, leave it, but there must be. I'll have a think about it. There, okay. there will be, but my mind is not firing on all, on all cylinders at the minute. We're all good, we're all good. So, we've pinned those two right sides together and now we're going to go arms and legs from this. Yes, and there's a dashed line on each of the arms and legs that show where that seam should fall. So, position that there. Okay. This is so we can create that pore effect, so it's just going to line up here. So, you're going to get the different fabric on the bottom there. So, I'm going to line that up. And there is a seam allowance on the top here, so when you cut out, you don't need to add any, any extra on the top. I've just drawn around my finger there, <laughs> skillfully. There we go. It's useful as well to have that stick in there. I was just going to grab some more um, to sort of make sure you can get right into those little fiddly bits. That's what yes. you need the stick for. And actually, I confess, I from previous Tilda kits, I've saved the stick. Keep the stick. And I have a couple of them now in my sewing bag. Why not? They are really handy yeah, for absolutely. pushing. In fact, did I use one earlier on the beak when I made the budgie? Just another thing to have in your stash, isn't it? It doesn't sound silly that there's a stick it's in a it. Stick, and actually, yeah. It's really, actually really useful. something you need. It just helps you to sort of... Right, I'm just going to turn. And because they can... It's not symmetrical but they can go in the same direction um, because you've got the, you know, the mirror image. And it, this will mean that, I think, if my 3D rotation in my mind is right, there will be different fabrics. You'll have this green We're fabric on the, on the front on one and this fabric on the front on the other one. OK, so we can do all of the arms and legs facing one direction. Yes. Let's see where that dotted line is. I might fold it so that... I know how to line it up. It always, and I know I always say this, but it always surprises me how much stuffing you can fit in a toy. You Tons. can just, I just keep going, keep going, going, going. That's the only thing you need to add to the fox kit is the stuffing. Everything else that you need to make the toy is in there. I'm just grabbing something. Well, just watch you do. Um, one of these and we're going to just recap the fabric and then I'll pop back over. Okay. I'll do an arm and a leg and I'll leave the other two just so... Just so we get an idea of the technique. Yeah. All right, so I've drawn round those and this section here is the seam allowance so I'm, and we want this end open so I'm going to sew from here all the way round and finish there and the same on these ones. Leave this. There's a seam allowance included. So I'm just going to leave that top end open. So you're going to stitch around those lines rather than cutting. That's the difference here. Yes. Stitch first, cut later with these, whereas yeah. normally it's... The other way round, isn't the it? Other, yes. 
And it's really nice, you know, when you've got a line to follow, you can go that bit faster, I think, because uh, it does make so, you know exactly where... Where to go and what to do, and you haven't got that fear of, oh, was I meant to leave a, you know... Is that the, and also as well, I think that that's how you get the iconic tilde shape because you're following that exact shaping that they've given from the template. You Whereas do. if you start to you know add on your own rough seam allowance or you know and, and you're just roughly following around it, then you might not mirror that exact picture you that you see on the box or on the bag. That's right. You'll stray from it slightly here and there, but you do you really re retain the shape that's been designed and sort of intended. That's how you get a tilde toy. You know, that's how you get something that looks. Like that. <laughs> Mr. Fox. There we go. There's a leg done. And I'll do an arm. So just following the arm round from that template that's in the instructions. I might sew the top there, actually. While you just go round those, Joe, we're just going to look at the um, harvest fabrics. What would you be doing after this? I don't want you to go any further, so just... I would cut these out. Just cut once. them out, so yes. and adding a seam allowance when you do that. Yes. OK, we'll come and see that in just a second, then, if you're all right to just to only do the sewing part, just so no we don't problem. miss it. And we'll just look at these harvest um, fabrics. So the most... Well, we've also got a fat eighth bundle this morning, so this is a 20-piece fat eighth bundle from that harvest collection that's incorporated in the fox. So you get... Um, 20 different fat eights and also from all the different uh, different colour selections within that family of the collection. So rather than it being just orange ears or just pinks like with the fat quarters, with the fat eights you get greens, you get blues, you get oranges, you get pinks. So these are some of the different fabrics in that collection. I'll just lift that so you can see. Let's show you the circle round. And just so you get an idea of that fat eight size. There you go. Shall I just hold that up a bit? So it's a really usable size for patchwork, for quilting. 50 centimetres by 27 centimetres. And these 20 pieces will come to you like this. So they actually look like fat quarters, um, but these are fat eights, so they're half the size. But again, as I was saying, you're getting a little bit, a little taster of all those different fabrics and a lovely way to add those to your stash. Now, we've also picked out some of the Tilda favourites from this new collection by the half metre. So some of our favourites, your favourites, the ones that, you, that you've loved so far. So there are more on the website, but these are the most popular ones at the moment. So we've got, first of all, the blue. This, this is a colourway. It was very popular when we first launched this. I believe it was last week. JZGQ62. That's the flower tree blue. Then that also comes in pink. Really lovely design. I said it earlier and I'll say it again. It reminds me of little Christmas baubles there. They're almost sort of sparkly and a bit frosty. Tilda, that's the flower tree purple. Sort of a magenta background there. Then you've also got our bird. This is on blue. This was the most popular way out in the lead this morning, so your favourite one from the Harvest collection so far. You've got blues, and this is as well got those lovely um, olive greens and pinks that you always see in Tilda. Bird tree blue. Then we've also got our cabbage flowers in blue and pink, so the main body of this is blue with pink highlights there in the central, sort of those focal sections, are almost like a little window peeping through there. Lovely as well, you could fussy cut these and take small sections if you wanted to. So the cabbage flower in blue, I'll just show you the cabbage flower in pink as well. This is my favourite one of all of the fabrics we've got by the half metre today. Again, you've got that um, aqua blue and the sort of that olive green just picked out in the central section of the flower. And then mainly pinks there and purples. Then you've also got your Bessie, I think this one's called. Is it Bessie? 
yes, Bessie, um, on your magenta pink background again with that duck egg blue in the central section. These just mix and match so well together as well if you do want to start playing around with them. And again, even with that one. And then the last one on your duck egg blue or, or sort of an aqua really. A really detailed print there from Tilda. Just lovely, whimsical, paisley and just all really, I, I just love their fabric. RTGQ31, that's the flower bush teal. And as I said earlier, we have got other fabrics from the collection from the Harvest range being sold by the half meter. Those are on the website. If you go to sewingquarter.com, type in harvest on the search bar, um, you won't see crops. Instead, you'll see tilde fabrics. So you can choose any of these in fat quarters, in fat eights, or by the half meter. But let's get back to Joe. We're using this fabric this morning to make a fox, our fox in a box. So you get everything you need to make our fox character, which is sitting just here. There he is, laying down. And Joe, you're just cutting round now the arms and legs. You sewed round using the line yep. and now adding the seam allowance as you cut. I am. I'm um, just doing it really quickly. If you want to make sure that these, the join on front and back line up, pin, when we pin the fabrics before, I just pinned it either side, but pin it all the way along if you really want these. So you get to this fall poor detail. In the right, sort of evenly on both sides. You can just see there where you get that division. Hello. <laughs> and then, oh, our fox doesn't want to stay there. And are you using the turning set for this then? I've only just discovered this. Let's How see. quick and easy is it? Have I done this properly? Actually, I've got I might, the wrong stick size. I might do the bigger one. That might be the I did. stick I used, I used for... Um, oh, it is. I'll try is this, this one. one. So this is a print turning set. This is great for turning through if you've got loops for perhaps tubing on a bag, but ideal for things like this, your Tilda toys where you've got small limbs. So you just pop the, um, the tube inside as Joe's done. So you get a, the big one, sorry. Got, no, that's right, I'm you've using got the wrong the... stick with the wrong size. But you get three different tubes like this, these navy tubes. And then you get three different sticks to push them through. If you can see that. There it is. The best thing ever. How quick is that? I know. Where's the other? Should we show the other one? I don't know if they missed that. Did you use this Should one? We, I used yeah. this one. So just pop so you the just tube. Pop the tube I think in. this Let's is just the right. So we can see that on a... There we go. Yeah. So you push the tube in. And then you push the stick through the centre of the uh, navy plastic tube. And you can just guide the fabric down the stick. Ta da! Turned out. No more fiddly bits. Shall I do this one while you... To give that one a go. It's so easy. Just pushing it through. Have I done that the, I've done that the wrong way. I've put the wrong one in. Did I just use the wrong stick, Joe? What did I do Hang there? Hang on, let's, let's have a see. No, that is the right one. Did I yes, that's the right, the right one. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Through the end. Just guide it through. These are great. I've not, I've not used these not before. before. No, I might have to. Uh... But you get three different sizes, so you've got one for even tiny. If you're making dolls clothes and things like that as well, really sort of tiny tubes there. And that one comes with a little metal stick. So I'm trying to illustrate what I was saying before about drawing around the template. If you, ha if you keep it the same way up both times, when you've done the finished arms, you need one for each side, so they need to be mirror images then. You'll have the different fabrics on each. As, as you look forward, front on, you'll get all four of the fabrics shown in the arms and the legs will be the same. Oh yes, because they've all been from that one band where you cut it directionally, I see what you mean. And then on the back is obviously, would be, the, would be a half and half of the reverse. Yes, so if they matched, that, that would both that would be a left arm. Oh no, it would be its right arm. Because you need one going each way. You get all the fabrics then shown. At the front, so you get to see view. everything. You do. And once more, just that turning set there, you've got the three different tubes to put through. Great for the Tilda toys, particularly those long, the monkey arms and legs, that would be great for as well. Or if you've got a Tilda book and you're making the Tilda angels, I know they do all the different seasonal angels, um, you can use those for the, for the long arms and legs that are quite, um, quite typical that you would find in a Tilda toy. Okay.
the body fabric is joined in the same way. So you're given dimensions to cut the fabric to, because this is the fabric. You need to be careful when you cut out the head bit that you do it up top to the close, close to the top of the fabric. Don't do it straight in the middle, otherwise you might not have the size strip you need for this point. Okay. So we'll fold that over, line up the seams. We've got about seven, six or seven minutes. I mean, I've done, I've gone through all the, everything else now, the body is done in the same way as for the limbs. Fold that over, match the seam up. So we're just following that. So I think so to be so again around this line. Again around the line, so draw it in place, line up the dashed line with the seam so that it's going to fall in the correct place. And then again, draw around the templates. And this time, oh, that wasn't very good, we're leaving openings they're marked here and that's where the, the arms are going to fit in. The bottom is left open to turn. Because this is slightly different to the monkey, so the monkey you attach the limbs after, this is actually built in yes. to the seam allowance of but, the body. Yes. Which you can see. Just here with the fox, where our arms and legs attach. And the same here with the legs. This is the main body here, you can just see with the... It showcases the fabric, really, and, and I love that my favourite fabric made it to the body. That's the, like, the main bit here, that, but you really get to sort of see... ..see those different fabrics in the collection. It really is beautiful. I mean, this, I think this Harvest one is my favourite. Isn't it? I just it's haven't really seen it lovely. until this week, and it's... Obviously, it's a new... and it's been quite difficult to get, um, but it is lovely. I, I like the circus. Colours. But I really Circus like this one. Like, yeah, with the elephants yeah. and the, like, the trapeze artists. and oh, I keep pressing the knot button on the machine. So with all of these templates this morning, the, or other than the head, actually, the moral of the story has been that you stitch around the... You draw around the template and then you stitch around that line and you cut your seam allowance in the fabric later. Yes. So you add it later or afterwards. That's drawing it out and, and sewing around the lines you've drawn is very much, for, for me, is the, tel is the tilde way of doing it, yeah. But with some things, that's just not possible. So to get this shape in the face, there's not a way of doing that technique and retaining that <laughs> or achieving that curve. OK. For about three minutes. But in that kit this morning, if you've just tuned in, you get a box with all of your instructions. You get all of your tilde fabrics as well. You get the uh, stick for turning through. You get your threads. You just need to add your toy stuffing to make the fox. And he's a really tall toy, 61 centimetres. So really lovely. He's just sitting on a bed or on a chair. You can imagine him just sort of sat lounging in someone, even in someone's kitchen or on the sofa, couldn't you? And colour photographs as well, so you know exactly which fabric goes in which section. And you'll have some fabric left over, I'd have thought, a little bit. There are there's not little lots, bits. but you get lots of nice scraps. I mean, I would save all this sort of... For some English paper piecing or something? Yes. You'd have enough little bits. Beautiful. Victoria Pete would be straight on these. She was doing some hexes. So then the body... I'll turn it out the right way. I mean, we'll do this wrong size, but the arms fit in these yep. openings here. And then turn it, it's really well, I think all the complicated bits, I think probably the trickiest bit is the head, the face, but it does, it goes together really nicely. So just quickly then, if you're talking about the face, because you're just then, then were you going to say about popping the legs in the bottom? You press this, I'll have to turn it back this way. So you stuff the arms, fit them in, and then sew these openings close. Go over it a few times so it's really well secured. And also, actually, you could go back and sew over these joins just so you, they don't... Because you've cut through the stitching just mm. to make sure they're really well sealed. I mean, you could, once you put the arms in, go all the way round again. Just for Imagine that was added stuffed. security, yeah. That was in. And then turn, press that end up, turn it all the right way and pop the legs and the tail. The tail's done in the same way. This time, it's the leftover fabric. Fold it over, right sides together. Again, using the dashed liners, on the, put that on the seam, draw around it, stitch around it, cut around it. Yes, so exactly the same method for the arms and stuff it like you would the legs. Pop those in at the end, sew the bottom together. And then it's just embroidering. You've got 
in the kit. That's what I've done with it. The purple thread embroidery thread like to do the nose. Here. And then the eyes as well. Yes, I mean you could embroider those on if you wanted, but Tilda they tend to be um, drawn or you know with the fabric marker or pen. Just a little pen. dot, a yes. small little tiny little dot. And even some of them, they put little rosy cheeks on. They do, you can yeah. put a little bit of, we haven't got like any on. Blusher. Yeah, he has got a tiny bit of blusher on, but it's coming off. He needs a little bit more blusher. He's got rosy cheeks. So you can add that on there. So the kit for that is on your screens at the moment, WRGQ39. Everything you need to make one fox. Um, all of the fabric there from the Tilda Harvest collection, your instructions and your thread. And then that was a brand new one. Um, and then we've also had the monkey that we uh, had to get back in stock because it's so, so popular, which is a monkey in a bag. This is from Pardon My Garden, uh, the Tilda collection, and you get two fabrics in this one. Two different colourways. And then everything you need with your stuffing again, your thread, your wadding, to make two monkeys for 1995. Oh, well, thank you very much, Joe, with oh, our little you, that's fox. Good. That's a new one for you, wasn't it? It is, I love the morning. fox. He's a little cutie, so here you go. Take my, I'll hand sure. him over like the baby. Support the head. Support the head, support the head. <laughs> a bit out of practice. It's all very serious. I'll come out and Joe will be feeding it with a bottle. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Let's go and look at these fabrics. So, um, first of all, should we look at the menu for tomorrow's show? We'll look at the fabrics first. Okay, we'll do our Fat Eighth bundle to start with. So, 20 different fabrics from the, um, from the Harvest collection. You're getting pinks, you're getting purples, lots of florals and different, different prints there. Some of these you'll have seen us working with this morning with that body of the fox. And there's no doubles, so you get 20 different, you get really get a nice taste of the collection. You're getting 20 different fabrics. Moving through the different colourways there with greens, your birds, your flowers, in khakis and pinks and the olive greens as well. And then your oranges on the top. 20 of those, UHGQ89, 50 centimetres by 27 centimetres. So this is, the, this is the size of a fat eighth. And you can use those for lots of different projects and a nice way to introduce some of that new collection into your stash. So let's have a look at tomorrow's menu, what's coming up on tomorrow's show. I think John's in tomorrow. We've got the feather cushion. John and Joe. Joe's back in in the morning as well. We've got new Tula, so some Tula pink. Then we've got the sausage dog. You're going to love that, the dash hound. I know some of you have been sharing your pictures on Facebook. And then 11 a.m. Tula Tastic, so some more Tula, um, Tula Pink with John. And that's some brand. That's a brand new animal that um, the dog th tomorrow. So that's a brand new one this morning from jo tomorrow morning from Joe. Now I'm not in for a little while now. I'm actually off for. I've got to have an operation next week, which is a bit of a pain, which is very annoying. So I'm not going to be here for six or seven weeks. So I'm going to leave you in the very safe hands of Tash and John and Derek. I'm sure will be in as well. So I'll miss you all. I've been. It's been lovely being here a lot recently, and I'm not going to be in for a little while. But I'll be fine. It'll all be all right. I just. Just dreading, dreading not being at work. I love being here with everyone. Those bundles this morning from Tilda, you've got your fat eights and your cut off the bolt fabrics um, from the Harvest range as well. You can look at all of those on the website. Remember too, you can put that in the search bar and just search for Harvest and find them. Then we also had the budgies earlier. Congratulations if you managed to get some of those and the lovely fabrics as well from that new collection from Lewis and Irene. So I hope you have, a, we've got a couple of Berties left, I'm being told, so if you do want a budget, you can get those. So have a lovely weekend. Thank you for your company over the last couple of days, and I'll see you at the end of October. Bye. <laughs> follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com.